everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the only YouTube community channel not hosted by a two-faced, illiterate, grammar-challenged, untalented, sleep-deprived, egomaniacal, manipulative, son-of-a-bitch, rumor-mongering, sociopathic, psychopathic, psychotic, neurotic, pathological liar, fake watch-owning, con artist, drug-using, drug-abusing, over-medicating, Undermedicating, self medicating, narcissistic, obnoxious, crass, hateful, uneducated, jealous, envious, devious, deceptive, bipolar, low IQ, sadistic, socially and sexually deviant, paraphiliac, obsessive compulsive, antisocial. Occupying a place on the spectrum, multiple personality disordered, convicted felon, delusional, hallucinating, rageaholic, alcoholic, moon landing, denying, screaming, yelling, backstabbing, discount haggling, cognitively impaired, not playing other people's clips, non-repetitive, daily, same as every other day, non-content. Luxury product hoarding and possessing. Low class wannabe world celebrity and fake arbiter of what is taste, class, and elegance. Fake fishing trip goer. Bong inhaling, glue sniffing, coke snorting. Heroin sniffing, imaginary decamillionaire. Welcome to tonight's show. All right. Glad to have everybody here. If anybody is watching. That's always a novelty on this channel. Well, let's go ahead and uh, get it started. And uh, here we have, um, let's go ahead and welcome some guests here. Let's see, Big Dave. Hey, Big Dave. Big Dave is not a Starkist fan. Okay, fair enough. Oscar Madison, good to see you as usual. Guy Gadois. Guy Gadois, I was watching the first Pink Panther movie after we talked yesterday. I'm about halfway through it. It's free on um, uh, Pluto TV on the website, but they use commercials, you know. But uh, wow, it's um, it's so big. It's such an early characterization of the, of Inspector Clouseau. Um, after the first movie, you can see the character was the focus of all the subsequent films, and he really played it up more. But the first film is uh, quite different. All right, and um, yeah, absolutely, right. I've never been in prison, never been in jail, never been arrested, never been convicted. The uh, I'm not wanted by any of the authorities. Right. Okay. Correct. Pink Panther. All right. So let's let's go ahead and continue on from yesterday's show to the um, the resolution, the denouement and resolution of yesterday's show, and uh, perhaps uh, which, of course, the topic was and is tuna, because I love tuna. If you know what I mean. And I know you do. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, catch up here. This is the topic right here. This is this is it. This is what the show was about. And I'm not going to rehash yesterday's show. Um, if anybody really is interested enough, just pr uh, watch yesterday's show. And um, there you have it. Well, today I called up the Starkist Company. I talked to the uh, consumer affairs uh, person, very friendly, nice, very well-spoken, nice, polite woman. And I, I told her my question, or I asked her my question, like I said I would do on the show yesterday. And she read off of a like note card, or you know, because they must get this question. And the essence of what she said was, 
Well, because we don't have to, it's not required. And I said, well, how come almost every other company uh, on their tuna fish, either on the label or the bottom of the can, they say where it's from, you know, product of Thailand, etc., you know, Portugal, whatever. And she said, well, we don't have to. And I said, okay, uh, well, but it's unusual that everyone else would do it, but Starkist company doesn't. And I, I'd like to know where it's from. So she, she recited a few countries. She goes, well, then she read a prepared sentence, something about Ecuador, American Samoa, and um, some other country. And uh, I said, well, yeah, yeah, okay. But, um, but I want to know this, this exact can that I bought, this package, where is it from? So she said, okay, well, the reason we don't put it on the can is because we don't have to. And what that means is, according to the FDA or whatever the source that she cited on regulations, et cetera, et cetera, is if the product originates in, the, in America, then you don't have to include source of the origin of the product. If it's from a, not a country other than America, then it's required to list the country. So I said, okay, so what does that mean? So she goes, well, this comes from American Samoa, which is America. Because I read her the product code on the bottom. And she says, okay, that, that indicates American Samoa. And Starkis has a big facility there. So the fish are uh, fished, the tuna are uh, fished from the waters in the area of American Samoa. Now, I don't know how large a radius that is. You know, it could be 10 miles, could be 1,000 miles. I, I don't know. But uh, it's canned, cooked, processed, and then shipped to the United States from American Samoa, where it's distributed around the country. I said, well, that's, that's the great answer. So that's what I wanted to know. And I said, uh, I also was asking because primarily I wanted to know if, this, if, Starkist, if any Starkist tuna was a product of China because I don't want to buy any food from China. And she said, uh, Starkist policy is, has a strict policy of no, no business, no food arrangements with China. No product sourcing is from China. That's a Starkist policy. So, well, okay. That's, you've been terrific. You answered all my questions, and thank you. Uh, now, what does this mean, Guy Gadois? Carl... Okay, I can't read that. Let me go on the other page here. Colonel Squirrel, oh, geez, didn't like you bashing Italian products, crappy. Now, what the hell does that mean? When did I bash any Italian products? Are, are you serious, Guy Gadois, or are you just pulling my, like... Well, Bobby Orr, yes and no. Um, because they listed... You mentioned that they had three countries on their website, American Samoa, Ecuador, and, and then there was one other. But the key things I wanted to know were, were, one, where was this can from? Don't give me, I don't want a selection of countries. I want to know where it's from. Okay. And two, that doesn't mean that they don't also, at the time, I'm thinking, that didn't mean that they don't also source their food from China. They just don't put it on the website. So uh, I, I needed that information, but uh, you are on the right path. No question about it. Bobby, uh, Guy Gadois, what, what in the hell does that comment even mean? I don't know. Is there a story behind that? Okay, great. All right. So I want to, um, now that we've established it's American Samoa, uh, well, here's the Dirk Diggler uh, kind of guy with, his tuna. He sure looks happy. And here's the tuna. This is what we're talking about. Tuna fish. I don't know why we call it tuna fish, but every other fish we just say halibut, salmon, mackerel. We don't say salmon fish, sa you know, mackerel fish. But You know, now that I look at this picture, this... um. 
This reminds me of a particular YouTuber I know. So, some guy on YouTube uh, with a funny accent. This kind of resembles him. A little bit. You know? Well, anyway, okay, let's continue. So let's look at American Samoa. And this is American Samoa. Uh, just a little run rundown, not rundown, a little um, information about it, because I don't know anything about American Samoa. The people of American Samoa are Americans, but they're not citizens. They're called American nationals. Isn't that interesting? They don't have full representation in American government. I don't know what the deal is with that, but this is basically what it looks like. I mean, beautiful, clean water and just total lush green mountains and palm trees and white beaches. And uh, unusual uh, things, whatever you want to call them. Jutting out into the water. Look at that. Pretty amazing. All right. That shows a nice picture. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What's this? He addressed it on the Horology Hangout after your show. Okay, I would love to hear what I said about bashing Italian Italian products. That is such bullshit. Absolutely such unbelievable bullshit. He just makes shit up, you know. He just makes stuff up. And by the way, uh, this also verifies what's been proven for a year. This particular guy always screams and bloats out that only two people watch this channel. And he's always one of the two. I think he watches every episode. Just absolutely amazing. He has nothing nice to say, so he just, you know, well, enough of wasting about that time. Mookie's here. Uh, Marcella? No, no. Well, if um, Guy Gadois, that's what he says, I mean, isn't that interesting? So, Well, actually, it's not interesting. It's just kind of pathetic. But anyway, let's continue on. Let's get back to the beautiful pictures here. Look at this. It's just uh, all green trees. Man, it's... Um, wow. Now, here's, um, here's a very nice picture of uh, more mountains. and Man, and uh, this is a little town right here. And um, I can understand how the people who are from there for generations live here, but... Would anybody in the audience want to live in a place like this where there's um, there's no road, there's no police cars and sirens, and I don't see a 7-Eleven anywhere. I don't see a Carl's Jr. or a Burger King. Man, is, wouldn't it be too quiet? This would be like Hawaii, but 200 years ago. But it's smaller. I mean, like, what do you do here? I mean, you wake up and just breathe the clean air, uh, swim in the beautiful clean water, eat the fresh ocean seafood, make love to your woman, and sleep. I, I don't know what else you do there. Does that doesn't? Know, I don't know if that's good or not. It's too hot. That's the problem. It would be good if it were Alaska, but it's too hot. Here's um, a picture of the Samoa Islands. And if you look here, there's several of them, but one of them is called American Samoa. All right. And uh, if we take a look here, here's Australia. Here's the equator. Uh, Hawaii is over here. So, and then here's United States. So, man, look, look where this is. It's um, Australia to Fiji. You got Tonga, New Zealand, Samoa, American Samoa, Tahiti, then Easter Island, which is famous for those statues. So it is really, wow, far away. So according to the Star Kiss representative, 
They're catching the fish around here, which sounds fine. And then they cook it and can it and all that stuff. And then they ship it all the way here to the United States. Probably San Diego, Los Angeles, or San Francisco. Maybe. Just uh, incredible. Now here's a really nice picture of tuna boats in one of the harbors there. And let's, let's see if we can zero, uh, close up on that. These are the actual tuna boats that are catching the starfish tuna. And look at this, Chinese writing on the back of that boat. I wonder, hmm, is that a Chinese operated boat? I don't know. All right, and then um, um, here's a boat, uh, Tuna Go, number 31. Tuna Go, number 32. Oh, that's a good name for a tuna fishing boat, Tuna Go. Or it could be Go Tuna. Or maybe Tunago is an island. I mean, I have no idea. But yeah, these are the boats. And boy, it's a small, small fishing, har small harbor, small port. And then mountains and greenery. And now this is it. This is this is it. The name of the island is uh, Atu Atuu. And this is Charlie the Tuna. And it says Atuu, permanent home of Charlie the Tuna. This is the Star Kiss fishing. Uh, I'm sorry, the Star Kiss Tuna. Would you say factory or processing plant? Or This is it. It's not a complete picture, but now look what they have here. This is interesting. It says salad oil on this big uh, silo or whatever you would call it. So, it's, but man, it's so rural, not rural, just so such a small Pacific Island operation. But I mean, the fish are right there. So I guess it sounds good. Okay. Charlie the Tuna was the TV or the the uh, advertising um, mascot for Star Kiss that goes back to the 60s, maybe even before the 60s. Yeah. All right. Wait a minute. Isn't Charlie the Tuna Chicken of the Sea brand? I don't know. I'm confused. Well, I won't think about it too much. Look at this. This is some uh, restaurant uh, bar kind of place to hang out. Would anybody like to go to this place? Here's a little beach area. Totally clean. No beer cans or cigarette butts. No joints or roaches, uh, insect or grass either way, you know. And uh, you just lie on the beach. You sit here in the, uh, in the huts, the thatched hut, and enjoy your uh, Mai Tais or whatever. Absolute total quiet and peace. It's just like, and hot. And big bugs, I betcha. I would go crazy in a place like this. I, I would have a panic attack. You know, because it's just so isolated. Now, this is an interesting picture. Um, this is one of the products of American Samoa. And this is taro root, which they have in Hawaii too. Taro root which is a tasteless kind of, it's kind of like a yucca, what do they call it? Um, jicama. Jicama, which is actually pretty interesting. Uh, um, taro is, uh, they make a paste out of it called poi, which they eat in Hawaii. So it's a nutrition, it's a source of nutrition, but it's kind of tasteless. And these things here, these, this is called, these are called breadfruit. Now, when I saw... Mutiny on the Bounty, the movies, the old one in the 30s, and the Anthony Hopkins one, which was really excellent. I really liked it. Mel Gibson and Anthony Hopkins. Um, Captain Bly, uh, with the HMS Bounty, he went there to pick up palm fruit, breadfruit, and the plants to uh, bring back to England and stuff. But this is breadfruit. I don't know why they call it that, but uh, I've never seen this in any supermarket I've ever been in. They might have it in Hawaii, but I wasn't looking for it. So I don't know if they have it there, but uh, I wonder what it tastes like or what it looks like. Here's another interesting picture from American Samoa. I wonder if you can walk out onto that. I don't even, I don't think you could, but some people probably try it. Maybe go jumping off to swim, you know, cliff diving or whatever they call it. Here it is. This is American Samoa. 
This is the island. There's several islands, and this is called Aunu'u. Aunu'u Island. Aunu'u. Probably Aunu'u Island. Wow. And this is where the Starkist uh, uh, facility is located. And it's just totally isolated by the water. And I, I could never live there. I would, um, I would go nuts. Well, I mean, beyond nuts. I'm already at that point. But I'd, I'd, uh, I'd just feel um, panic. And um, unless I met a beautiful Samo American Samoan young lady, then maybe I wouldn't feel any panic at all. I'd have all the tuna that I could handle, if you know what I mean, and life could be good. So that's possible. Maybe it would be nice drinking beer and Mai Tais and all that tuna. So might be nice. Now, this is a really sad little story here. Just a little bit of the history. This is uh, from 1787. And this image is of a French explorer called Florio de Langle, de Langle. And uh, he was like Captain Cook exploring the South Pacific, looking for uh, fresh water and food. So the story is that here's this ship. And the story was uh, he was running out of food on his ship. And so he found this place. So he thought he'd check it out, look for uh, fresh food and fresh water. And unfortunately, when he landed in 1787, uh, some number of thousands of the um, uh, residents there, you can see here on the right, they didn't uh, want him there. And um, his little boat and the captain here, they, uh, they either they killed him uh, with stones and spears and uh, much of that crew on those little boats there, uh, not little boats, the whatever you call them, rowboats perhaps, uh, they were wounded or killed as well. And uh, some of them got back to the ship and, and survived. And um, wow, well, that got, that, that's a bad situation there. But um, yeah, you can look it up, History of American Samoa, and um, phew, bad. Okay, here's another picture. Uh, of uh, a state park area or national park. Incredible mountains. And it's totally green. Everything is green. There have got to be the most humongous insects crawling around here, you know, like in Southeast Asia and cockroaches, flying cockroaches and millipedes and centipedes. And I mean, I, I can't imagine. But then again, you know, you have those beautiful, you know, Tahiti is not that far. Well, it's far, but it's one of the closer islands, so probably a lot of beautiful women uh, living there. This is uh, an animal native to Samoa and a few of the other islands. This is called a flying fox. And this particular guy here, he's uh, native or specific to that area. There are flying foxes all around any, many places, but this one is particular to Samoa. And a flying fox is a bat. But this particular kind of bat has a fox, foxy kind of looking face. And like, you know, soft looking fox fur. But you see, it's got the wings and it's released. And they eat, um, they don't eat people. They, uh, they eat insects and fruit and stuff like that, you know. And, uh, and they're very beneficial for living there because they keep the insect population, you know controlled and uh, they also spread um, the seeds from all the fruit they eat and stuff so very beneficial and that's um, that's the last picture there so let's go ahead and um, yeah I like this is a very nice picture so that's the fishing harbor in Pago Pago I think that was the name of the port so let's go ahead and get back to the uh, main screen here okay 13 people watching thank you very much and let's catch up with the comments um link a nice veal dinner what are you talking about i have absolutely no i don't eat veal 
the way that um, I know when I was a kid, no one thought about it. But when you find out how veal is uh, produced, it's um, I don't care how good it is. It's just uh, animal cruelty. Just awful. Um, American Samoa population has fallen 26% since 2020. Well, okay. Like Bond. What do you mean? In Skyfall. Don't turn your back on me, sir. I don't know what the people... Well, Hans, what are you talking about? I, I don't know what that is. That was the man with the golden gun hideout. Yeah, he lived in a place kind of like that. Off of Thailand, I think it looked like. Uh, Mr. Higgins would know exactly. Right. Um, the, uh, what am I missing here? Well, I'm missing a lot, but what am I missing here? Hands, knees, and toes. Don't turn your back on me, sir. Then go full Brando. You got me. New Guineans were not friendly at all and sent spears to every ship that tried to land. Captain Cook warned others to avoid. Yeah, even now, um, from the little I've read about New Guinea, uh, it's a very dangerous place, not because of the natives throwing spears and you know, eating people as cannibals, you know, cannibalism, but um, it's full of dangerous gang, well, all gangs, but it's, it's very dangerous, so roving gangs with machetes and uh, once you get out of the main the main center of the business area good luck you know you deleted my comment before that like i'm scrolling back like a nice veal dinner he addressed it on the horology hangout after your show i never talked about a veal dinner uh yeah gee i mean uh I, I i'm missing what it is but okay i dare you to look at the hammerhead bat it has a dog's face well i'll take your word for it i don't want to do a show about bats Oh, I see. Hopkins said that to Gibson. Hopkins was fantastic in that movie. And Mel Gibson, too. I mean, they really, you could say, you could tell they had a passion for that movie, making that movie. I really liked it. I didn't think it would be anything special at all. Because the original one with uh, Charles Lawton and uh, Clark Gable was just fantastic. And the, that one with, um, what did they call it? Bounty. The Bounty? Was that the title? Wow, really good film. And uh, I emailed a photo. Okay, well, let me look on my phone. It's going to be hard to see if I can find that, but let's take a look. Um, oh, man. Uh, means playing around with all the screens here. I'll... Um, I'll see if I can do that. All right. Um, very good. So, veal parmesan is, or is a veal parmesan? I don't know the correct uh, spelling or pronunciation. It, it's delicious. It really is. You know, breaded veal cutlet with a side of spaghetti, or you know, uh, and all the uh, other dishes. Fantastic. It's one of the great meals, but I'd rather have chicken parmesan or um, one of my favorites, eggplant parmesan. And again, I'm not Italian. I don't speak Italian, so I don't know if it's eggplant parmesan, eggplant uh, parmesan. I don't know, but it's it's one of my favorites. If I were at an Italian restaurant with all my friends, and you had they had a complete menu, the chances are probably eighty percent I would choose eggplant parmesan. Very likely, because when it's good, it's really great. Or, you know, who knows what I would get, but very good chance of that. Now, back at a real Italian deli kind of place in New York, you know, I mean a real, not 
a faux Italian deli, you know, where they make sub sandwiches and all that stuff. You can get an eggplant Parmesan sub. And it is just, uh, you know, with a beer or a Coke, it is just heavenly. You know the place in The Sopranos where uh, after Christopher got made, he went to the pizzeria and uh, the guy, the owner of the pizzeria, you know, walked around the counter and gave him a hug and you know, congratulations. That kind of place. You know, pure Italian, everything. They would make a phenomenal eggplant Parmesan hero. Okay, Forbin says... When you see it spelled Parmigiana, Italians would not enunciate the last A. Now, when you go to the supermarket and you buy an eggplant Parmesan frozen dinner, they spell it P-A-R-M-E-S-A-N, Parmesan. So that's the Americanized form, I guess, of Parmesan or Parmesan. I don't know. Anyway. So I'm going to take a sip of my uh, chamomile tea. Mm. What was the name of Artie Bucco's restaurant? Oh, wow. What a great question. Um, from The Sopranos. Oh, wow. It's in my, I haven't thought about it in a year, but... Uh, um, Vesuvios, that's it? Right. You know, the character of Artie, when I first started watching The Sopranos, I thought the character of the, the restaurant owner, chef, uh, Artie Bucco, was like, uh, wow, what a uh, unimportant character in, in, in the whole scheme of The Sopranos. But then I saw that, you know, all the guys would be over there for dinner all the time, and this guy turned out to be a really great characterization because... There's one episode where he got into a huge fight with Tony. I don't remember the details. And he was angry as hell, you know. And his wife was screaming at him and nagging and giving him, giving him all kinds of shit. And I think the episode is uh, Tony and his wife, or Tony and his wife and family, came in very late, just when he was closing. And they wanted dinner. And he said, oh, Tony, uh, I'm just closing up. And then Tony, you know, gave him a look like, you don't want to say that to me, kind of look. And he goes, then he realized, you know, hey, no problem. Have a seat, you know, for you, no problem. You know, and, and he went in the kitchen to, and he says, I don't know what I have to prepare, but I'll make you something the best I can. And so the scene was he goes back into the kitchen and he's wondering, what, what am I going to make for Tony and his wife or uh, family? And uh, he had a rabbit recipe and he had a fresh rabbit there uh, ready to be cooked. So he made uh, some recipe, and you can see him uh, at the oven, at the stove with the um, uh, with the rabbit and the big saucepans and all the ingredients. And he starts cooking the thing, and he totally um, goes from you know the pressure of having to make Tony happy and the uh, the nagging from his wife, and he's he he looks up his father's old written recipe. You know, and he becomes just who he really is, just, you know, the terrific chef with the old Italian recipes doing his thing. And that's when he was the happiest. And it really came across so, so beautifully. But he it turned out he was a very uh, not one of the main characters, but he was in he was a, he played a very good part in the uh, in all, in all the storylines. And especially the uh, Armagnac bullshit episodes you know i'm not bullshit i mean um dramatic episodes there but anyway sopranos invented the shortened form of parm which no italian american family said oh yeah give me a veal parm or whatever but now the troglodyte delis sell sandwiches labeled veal, veal parm aping the show oh really that's um well i don't know you know i don't have a comment on that <clears throat> But it, it's kind of stupid, <clears throat> I would think. But, you know, people copy everything. Very few people are original. Maybe the, 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 uh, the, the owners of their little restaurants, they think it's kind of cool. So, yeah. Morgan. 
Artie's wife was catering a lunch for Carmela and felt insulted by Carmela and so told her she slept with Tony when they were teens. Okay, I don't recall that. <clears throat> one of the amazing things, one of the great things about watching The Sopranos, besides the fantastic stories and uh, the writing, was the actors were so good. I mean, it was so unusual for so many, the actors were just picked perfectly in the casting. Tony was just, uh, I mean, the first episode, everything's like, you know, being, all the kinks are getting, you know, worked on. And, but by the second or third episode, all these guys, they had the characters nailed. And the actors for Tony, just incredible. And Carmela. And I really liked uh, Richie April. Wow, he, he was just fantastic character. So the acting was just tremendous. And uh, Polly, wow, just, just great, great characters. And one of my favorite scenes is um, uh, Johnny Sack keeps telling Polly that uh, he keeps putting in the good word to um, the New York family boss. What was his name? Uh, I forgot his name. Carlo or no. Um, and uh, so one day, um, uh, Polly goes to a party, a wedding party for his niece or a cousin. And the big New York boss was there at a table. I forgot his name. And uh, he walks over to him, gives him a kiss. And he goes, how are you? And then the guy says to him, and who are you? And he goes, what do you mean, who am I? I'm Paul, Polly from New Jersey. And he goes, hmm? What? He goes, don't you know who I am? He goes, are you, uh, you know. Was, and then he walks in the bathroom, stares in the mirror, and realizes that Johnny Sack was yanking on his chain every day for years lying to him about uh, you know putting in the good word all the time with the New York boss Carmine that was it fantastic uh, very limited actor you know uh, the guy who played Paulie but he was fantastic they were they all were and I never say that about any show and uh, the guy who played um, the uh, the guy who tried to use the big words and um, <clears throat> oh fantastic yeah. Anyway, great show. Just extraordinarily good. Okay. Um, Sopranos seem to make a steady joke of gabagoo, capicola. I've never eaten capicola. I'm not into the cured meats like George Costanza, who, who loves the erotic cured meats. But um, um, when I look at, uh, at an Italian deli or even just, you know, a supermarket deli, they, ha they might have that stuff. There's so much white fat pieces inside the ham or the pork it's like well why eat that it's more fat than meat or just as much and i don't doubt it tastes great but uh, it's just such a high fat content yeah david proval that's the guy uh david proval played richie april like a terrifying psychopath just a, yeah you know most of the cast was actually italian and that guy was he was jewish new york jewish guy and um, fantastic, uh, absolute terrifying psychopath. I think of all the characters there who I would not want to get in trouble with, you know, Vito. And I feel like I could talk, I could reason with Vito. You know, Tony, you know, there's a, there's a certain amount of time where he'll work with you, okay? But, you know, you got to pay him, you know. Or, and, um, but uh, Richie April is just like psychopath. Well, they're all psychopaths. But he was like the, the most um, terrifying, I think, of all of them. Well, it depends on anyone's opinion, but uh, just tremendous. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, when he, he rammed the car over, uh, who's the guy who owned the restaurant, the pizza place? And uh, he, he demanded uh, his share for when he was in prison. And he goes, so he just ran him over a couple of times and totally, you know, Put him in the hospital. Wow. Yeah, Tony Sirico, the actor, just uh, great job. Anyway, enough of that. So, and of course, you know, uh, Italians do eat tuna. A lot of a tuna. There are Italian brands of tuna at the local uh, big uh, international super world foods kind of supermarket. And um, you know, I get a lot of the Portuguese uh, sardines and tuna and Spanish. I don't know if I've had any of the Italian, but I'll certainly get those 
at some point because I like trying all that stuff. The more tuna, the better. Yeah, okay. The role of the Terminator 2 guy, Peter Weller, couldn't get work until his... Oh, no, it's not Peter Weller. Peter Weller was the actor who played a RoboCop. The guy in Terminator 2, the... Uh, that was I, I forgot his name, but yeah, he played uh, Davey, the guy who owned the sporting goods store. Uh, that You're saying that part, Davey, the gambler, uh, made him known again. Yeah, definitely so. Yeah. And uh, incredible. Is he the one that said, Tony, you know me? And he goes, you know, F that, yeah, pay me the money, you know. And then he's selling those. He's they're they're cleaning out his store. They're uh, you know, and uh, he goes. He's ordering all these products that he's never going to be able to pay. You know, just bankrupting the store. And uh, and he they tell him to get all these you know coolers, portable coolers, and and they come in red and blue. And uh, he says, I can get the blue ones, but I can't get the red ones or something. And and uh, Richie says, get the blue ones. And then he says, yeah, the blue ones always sell. Or it was the red ones, one or the other. That's right. Yeah, Robert Patrick, that's it. Yeah, he had nowhere to sleep because um, he, uh, his wife threw him out. He, he was going to sell his son's car. So he was sleeping in the sporting goods store in the tent on a sleeping bag. And then what happened to him? He, um, he just had to leave New Jersey and totally destroyed you know, by his good friend, Tony. Mm. You know, there's a series on YouTube. I don't know if it's still on, but I used to watch it of um, the actress who played Christopher and um, the bust out. That's right. Sure. Right. The bust out. Um, and Goodfellas, same thing. When when uh, the restaurant owner went to Paulie and he asked him to be his partner. I just bust out the store. Right? Um, who's the guy who played uh, Junior's? Um, the guy who was taking care of Junior, um, uh, Bobby, was that his name? Yeah. And um, what was I going to say? I don't remember. I just had a Joe Biden moment. But uh, yeah, you know, there's a scene there where. Um, one of these rap star guys gets shot in the hospital and then he's becoming more popular. So um, Bobby walks over to this guy who's one of his assistants and he goes, you know what you need to become famous? You need to be shot like uh, the other guy. And he goes, what are you kidding? He says, I'll do it for you. I'm an expert. And he agrees to shoot the guy for, you know, for some money, 500 bucks or whatever he paid him a thousand. Yeah. And he goes, don't worry. It'll be just a flesh wound and you get all the free publicity. It'll be fantastic. And um, I know people who would do that. I mean, shoot, for the, you know, just, you know, just a flesh wound. And uh, you, you think about it, there are lots of people who would do that, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> whatever. Let's change the music. Put on something a little more, I don't know. No, this is too feminine sounding. I don't like this. Ah, here's something good for falling asleep, so this will be nice. So, let's go ahead and, um, oh, too loud. Need to lull everyone into a condition of falling asleep, so when I harangue them with send money now, they'll not even, they'll just open up their wallets and Make those super chats and PayPal's. They'll be like in a hypnotized state. 
and be sending all that money. Django. And now, what reference of Django are you referring to? Yeah, all right. Are you referring to the um, Quentin Tarantino film? I never saw that. Uh, I think the guy is... Uh, I don't care for his... I like Jackie Brown and Pulp Fiction. Okay, you know, but I, I don't want to see any of his other shit. And um, Django Reinhardt, okay. Yeah. And um, I only saw one clip from that movie where Don Johnson is on a balcony in a, in a southern plantation mansion. And uh, he's talking to uh, Christopher Waltz about uh, the slaves for sale or something like that. I don't really know. And uh, that's the only thing I saw from the film. I have no interest in seeing any more of it. Let's talk about a tuna sandwich. For me, the best tuna sandwich, bread, you know, you can have a roll of bread, oh, there's you know, hundreds of kinds of bread, and um, given a choice, I would choose, well, you know, you can get a roll, like at a New York deli or a sub, you know, Italian bread. No, I didn't like Reservoir Dogs. I thought it was just uh, the guy who made it. I thought the guy, the guy who wrote this and directed it is just a mental case, and I think I'm right. To some extent. I mean, uh, there's no point for the movie. No point at all. There's a scene in the movie with Michael Madsen where he's torturing a guy who's tied down to a chair. And I don't see what that has to do with anything in terms of producing a movie for the American people. I mean, how is that entertainment? You have to be a sick, demented asshole to, to enjoy that kind of movie. It serves no purpose. Just injures the, uh, the brains of the audience. Yeah, maybe uh, a tuna sub. You know what? You know what would be the ultimate, not the ultimate, but always great is a real Italian bread sub. Okay, not something from the supermarket, but a really great Italian bread, sliced in half. And you put on the tuna, and you don't skimp on the tuna. You put it on the tuna salad, lettuce, tomato, onion, and uh, olive oil vinegar. You sprinkle that on. And my, some people like, you know, pepperoncinis. I, I can't stand those, but some people like to uh, to eat those things on a sandwich. Ugh. So you got tuna, lettuce, tomato, onion, olive oil, vinegar sprinkled on, and um, salt and pepper could be okay. You know, mayonnaise. There's enough mayonnaise in the tuna salad, but if you want, you could add another bit of mayonnaise, and that's about as good as it gets. It can be toasted or not toasted, and uh, it's a classic, but it's a tuna sandwich is good on. Uh, here you go, multi-grain bread, uh, rye bread, uh, pumpernickel, any kind of bread, rolls, you know, Kaiser roll, uh, sourdough bread. I mean, it doesn't matter anything. A seeded roll. Uh, there's an ass pounding screen scene in Pulp Fiction and. You like that crap? Yeah, I saw that. I mean, this... the movie was, uh, overall, I like Pulp Fiction. I saw it several times, but I, I don't see the point of scenes like that. I mean, um, what's the point? You could film the same scene and not be so graphic. Directors prior to, let's say, the 70s uh, filmed rape scenes and murder scenes and gunfights, but you know, they don't show that they didn't show the head exploding and you know the uh as you just described that scene with uh Ving Rames and Bruce Bruce Willis. I mean it can be filmed more creatively and have even better impact. But you know, I'm not the director, so uh we know we know crappy doesn't do spicy anything. That's correct, yeah. So Forbin likes pepperoncinis. All right. I'll tell you what else I don't like on a tuna sub. Uh, some places, maybe uh, Subway sandwiches, 
you know this thing called shredded lettuce <clears throat> you know it's and when they're making a sandwich they just grab a, a handful of shredded lettuce and put it on the sandwich i hate that i hate it i want real lettuce you know properly laid down on the sandwich on the bread i don't i hate shredded lettuce Put lots of anchovies on your tuna sandwich. I, I don't eat anchovies. I can't stand them. I don't understand the anchovies without the uh, all the salt are an extremely healthy fish. One of the healthiest to eat. But um, you know, I just don't like the flavor, the taste of it. Yeah. Some people like to get an anchovy pizza or a double anchovy pizza, like jalapeno peppers. They get a Jalapeno pepper pizza or a double jalapenos, jalapenos, penas, whatever. Buckets of blood. You referring to a movie? Was that a Vincent Price movie? Bucket of blood? Don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, Mr. Higgins is here, all the way from Germany. I wonder how they serve a tuna salad sandwich in Germany. They probably use um, pumpernickel or uh, some kind of German heavy crusted kind of bread. And uh, no oil and vinegar. They probably put on uh, liverwurst for seasoning. Yeah, um, anchovies are very high in omega 3s. And. Um, very little mercury content in them compared to tuna. So I just never read it, you know. Vincent Price, Bucket of Blood. Yeah, I, I saw that, I think. Was that where he was a Shakespearean actor with the theater troupe? And uh, he's all these people are getting killed. I, I can't remember. Cassavetti said that his film, The Killing of a Chinese Bookie, I've never seen that. He said um, he didn't like the recent trend of violence, which he said in the 70s. So you want to see blood in his, so you won't see blood in his films. Right, right. Well, I agree. Now, you know, The Wild Bunch by Sam Peckinpah, which kind of started the craze of explicit graphic blood and violence. Um, I saw an interview with the director. And he said his reasoning, his thinking at the time was, if you make it that graphic and violent and explicitly bloody and all that, it'll make people so repulsed by the violence and the blood that it'll have a good effect on people not, you know, just... But looking back at it, he said he would have done it differently, less graphic, less blood, less violence, because it had the opposite impact on the audience. People just became bloodthirsty savages. You know, and, yep. Yeah. Witchfinder General, um, I, I know that film. Uh, it's a pretty damn good film. And I'll tell you a film with the same kind of story, which is a real peculiar film, but uh, I saw it as a kid, and I watched it about a year ago. It's on YouTube, called Mark of the Devil. And it's with uh, Herbert Lum, who played Chief Inspector Dreyfus in the Pink Panther films. And uh, it takes place in Austria or Germany in the uh, like 1500s, 1600s. And wow. And he's, uh, you know, burning witches and all this stuff. Really terrifically strange film. Uh, Maniac. I, I don't know that movie. Fonda was good. In which movie? And which Fonda? Inglorious Bastards. I uh, I saw it twice, and um, I thought, um, what's the guy? The guy who played uh, the American officer, um, you know, the big star. What's his name? Um, I just went blank. The, who's the guy? The lead actor of um, the American guy, the officer in charge of the uh, team. Brad, what's his name? Um, 
It's another Joe Biden moment. I thought he was very good. Brad Pitt, yeah. I hadn't seen him in that many films. I liked the way he played the part. That was good. And, of course, uh, the German officer uh, got all the acting uh, awards. And But, um, you know, that scene in the very beginning when he goes to the French farmhouse and he's uh, questioning the farmer about uh, if he's heard anything about the Jewish families in the area and might he be hiding them. And while they're talking and he's coming across as a friendly approach first, um, the farmer guy is smoking a pipe. So uh, the colonel asks, uh, you mind if I smoke my pipe? And he goes, go ahead. And he pulls out this big humongous pipe. And um, it's stupid. Now, in the uh, behind the scenes kind of story, uh, Christopher Waltz said to, or Quentin Tarantino said, hey, look, you know, when you're pulling out a pipe, one of them said to the other, why don't I pull out a big humongous pipe to show that I'm the boss, I'm in charge, and you got a pipe, but you call that a pipe? This is a pipe kind of thing. And and I thought that was pointless. But uh, very good, whatever. Yeah, so the film is okay, but I just, um, I'm not a Tarantino fan. What does that mean? Anyway, okay. Let's go ahead and change the picture. Talking about tuna. I think in Italian, the word is a tono. And again, I'm not Italian. I don't have Italian heritage. I don't speak the Italian language, but I think the word is a tono. T-O-N-N-O. If anybody wants to come on and tell me the correct pronunciation, that'll be okay. Now, when I say if anyone wants to come on, tell me the correct pronunciation, there's a limit to that, of course. I don't mean anyone, anyone. You know what I mean. Maybe they pronounce it tonno. Tonno. I don't know. The best tuna in Japan goes for very big money. Oh, absolutely. Um, sometimes they get a, a gigantic bluefish tuna, and it goes for over a million dollars. Like, I think the record was $10 million for one because um, that's sold at extremely high prices at sushi restaurants. And they don't use bluefin tuna really for canned tuna, but a tuna of that size, you can get 10,000 cans of tuna out of the one fish. And I saw that, I heard that on Japanese TV when I was there. Anyway. What's the best drink for a tuna sub? I'd say a Coke. Or a Coke Zero. Iced tea would be good. Uh, anything would be good, but I'd, I'd say a Coke Zero. Okay, iced tea. Well, you know what I haven't done? I haven't put up the invite link. Now, I know nobody's going to want to come on and talk. But, you know, I'll, I'll go, I'll make the attempt. I'll make the effort while I'm here. There's the link. And I'll post it on top of the chat. There it is. Has anybody here ever gone fishing for tuna? I don't mean on a fake fishing trip. I mean on a real fishing boat. It's an ocean fish. So any anybody uh, ever been a tuna tuna fishing? No Seven Up. Why the deliberate indifference and shaming? I liked Seven Up. I haven't bought it. I don't buy sugar sodas. Um, I will tell you this, Forbin, that if I were going to buy, or when I do buy a soda, I basically only get um, Coke Zero. And on the rare occasions when I, f I have a certain uh, a craving for something else, I get a Diet 7-Up. And uh, But I think those are the only two, quote, sodas that I buy.
I don't like, uh, you know, all the uh, vanilla Coke, cherry Coke, lime Coke, uh, pomegranate Coke, uh, tuna fish Coke. Uh, you know, I don't like any of that. You fish for tuna in a lake? Are you kidding? I, I don't know. The Spanish tuna is twice the price of the Italian tuna in Italy. Why would that be? Is it a different variety of tuna? Is it a better tasting tuna? Is there something special about the Spanish tuna? I've had Portuguese tuna when I lived in L.A. And let me tell you, it was glorious. Glorious. Maybe one of the best. Yeah. Boy, it was fantastic. The thing is, the xylitol in sugar-free still stimulates increases in insulin in your body. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I understand. But I, I don't, uh, you know, uh, drink, you know, gallons of that shit. Uh, but every once in a while, you know, Coke Zero just tastes good and um, it goes just perfectly with uh, pizza or a burger. Or Though I do like coffee with a burger as well. But, um, yeah. Okay, so Dave says to him, uh, the Spanish tuna tastes better than the Italian tuna, but... Um, oh, to you, it's like they taste the same, but they say in Italy it's a better tuna. Well, it may be. Um, don't know. Yes, correct. Yes. But, you know, one can of tuna, I'm sorry, ah, one can of regular Coke uh, has the exact equivalent of 11 sugar packets. So if you opened up you know, if you had a glass and you opened up 11 packets of sugar, you can't believe that that's what you're going to drink in one can. And if you have two a day, two cans maybe, you know, it's, uh, it's just amazing. Forman, I asked that in the beginning of the show. It's peculiar. We say tuna fish, but we don't say salmon fish, halibut fish. Uh, bass fish, mackerel fish. I, I don't know why that is. Maybe there's a fisherman out there. Not a fake fisherman. Maybe there's a real fisherman out there who, who knows the world of tuna fishing and or tuna preparation. And he knows the answer for that. I don't know. Fourteen viewers. You've all come for the free tuna sandwiches. And uh, we're sold out. Is uh, the tuna an apex predator? I don't know. Some things I know about tuna and some things I don't know. And I don't know. Do you think other fish, you know, larger fish than a tuna that eat the tuna, that they're thinking, boy, I, I feel like a tuna sandwich today. But they don't make a sandwich. But they're thinking, uh, should I go for a salmon or do I feel like tuna or salmon? And they go, I feel like tuna. And then they go, you know, eating the whole tuna right there. I don't know. You know, like a shark, for example. Yeah, sugar uh, destroys your body and, and your brain. Absolutely. Calamari. What about calamari? Ah, I see. You mean, yeah, I understand. Okay. I got it. Took five seconds for me to get it. 
Got it. You know, um, you know, a lot of people on YouTube, they use this word shtick. You know, like uh, they, they, they go into a tirade and then they go, oh, yeah, I'm just doing shtick. You know, like, you know, just absolute bullshit. But anyway, a lot of people on, on these chats, they call it stick. Oh, I'm just doing stick. You know, and the word is not stick. The word is shtick, as shown on the screen. So uh, please, anybody out there who's going to use that word, please call it what it is. It's shtick, not stick. Oh, look at this. Guy Gavois, $1.99. My substantial contribution. What? Ah. Uh, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Well, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it very much. If a tuna jumped in your boat, could it kill you? I don't know. I would say no. Okay. But um, what if the tuna jumped in the boat and there was a little two-year-old child in the boat? Maybe it could kill a two-year-old child just by, because of the weight and the force of it, you know, heading towards the, the body. Shouldn't we know this before we are going to try to catch it? If, uh, if tuna fishing was a deadly endeavor, I think people would know about that. Just my... It's shtick as an, ex it's an excuse to get away with abusing people. Correct, that's absolutely right. It's not shtick, it's just a sadistic, uh, insane uh, behavior. But, you know, whatever. Ah, yeah, there's um, the fins and, right. So who wants to come on the show and talk about nothing? Okay, could cut a, an artery or jugular vein. Absolutely correct. And uh, hey, we got a guest. We got a guest. We're going to learn all about something. Good evening, Herr Higgins. Hey, hello, crappy. Good morning. So, yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Just uh, listening to to you floundering in in tuna. <laughs> yeah, back in New York, uh, one of the big fish that is populated in that region. That well, as a kid, I would go fishing for often, and I'm sick. Of, I, I got sick of the fish. It's called a flounder. Mm. flounder is very it's a flat bottom fish kind of like a halibut but uh, yeah, or, mm -hmm. or a fluke and i got so sick of eating flounder you know ugh, sick of it oh, but stupid. um uh, how about you uh, were you ever a fisherman kind of guy or as a kid uh i, I grew up in stuttgart so uh, we are not big fish eaters because you your access to fresh fish is very limited right okay um so uh yeah um, um i didn't grow up uh, eating a lot of fish but um here in the north of course um you you get plenty of fish well yeah and you're a, yeah and uh, uh as you're talking about flounders um there is a chinese flounder uh, that i always enjoy when, when I, uh, eating when i'm in china and that hong is... kong really okay yeah. They have and how do, how do they prepare that how do you like it served uh with <clears throat> um with uh with uh fresh uh spring on uh, spring onions mm -hmm. and a dark sauce uh, that that's how they prepare yeah well they know their fish i'll tell you that yeah that's for sure. totally yeah yeah right i know that um uh, that our friends uh, are going to the market and buy one uh, very fresh uh, when uh, when uh, i'm there and uh, they they really like uh, know that that I um, like it very much. And every time that I'm in Hong Kong, usually very I, funny I you mentioned it. Chinese flounder because mm -hmm. in the Seinfeld episode, uh, Elaine was going to order from the Chinese restaurant, mm -hmm. and uh, she called up and uh, on the menu that she had the paper menu that she had at home, uh, the guy on the phone when she was ordering, she said uh, uh, special limited time Chinese flounder, mm -hmm. first time mm -hmm. in America. 
So she said, is that really true? First time in America? And the guy on the phone at the restaurant didn't give a shit. And he goes, yeah, 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 first time. She goes, okay, I'll get the special Chinese flounder. I think that's what mm -hmm. happened. And then that was a very funny episode. But anyway, okay. um, yeah, I would probably try it if it was prepared like that. But um, uh, flounder and fluke are just uh, so boring. Yeah. And, yeah. I'm um, not, I can't tell you the difference between a, a Western flounder and this uh, Chinese flounder that I like so much. Um, uh, that I can't tell you. I just can tell you that it uh, tastes very well. You know, there's a fish that um, in New York growing up, uh, I, I, one of my favorite fish, but around the country and even in other countries, they use the same name for the fish, but it's a different kind of fish. And that fish is um, another Joe Biden moment. Red snapper, that's it, snapper. Mm -hmm. Or in New York, yeah. it's called red snapper. It's just fantastic fish to eat. But when you go to different countries or cities, um, what they call snapper is not the same thing. So maybe they maybe they are snapper fish, but mm. different varieties or species of of a snapper, or maybe it's just a different fish and they don't know, so they just call it snapper. But it's an occasion for another extensive research for you, <laughs> I guess. Maybe so. Yeah, if I have if I'm good and drunk enough, then maybe so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's an interesting question. Um, well, I first have a question before the viewer's question. Is there any recipe that you can think of or maybe you've seen in a restaurant where you can serve on the main plate fish with sausage? No, no, totally not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that just sounds revolting. I Yeah, yeah, th uh, that sounds a little bit weird. You know, we, we have uh, surf and turf, of course. Right. Uh, but that would uh, would stress it a little bit, I would say. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Okay, so here's a question um, from Hands, Knees, and Toes. Higgins, does Higgins have knowledge on the subject of academic fencing? No. Okay. Interesting question. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. So why, why, he, would he, why would he Hands talking? ask that question? Yeah. I, I have no idea. Um, is he talking about... I know that, uh, that in... in um, when you when you watch movies sometimes uh when when there is a an elite uh, university they have an exclusive fencing club yes is he yes. talking is he talking about that or is he talking about uh backstabbing among uh, academic circles so uh, mm. uh i don't yeah understand i, the I question, um but, mm. yeah i i've seen that in in old move in movies about that take place in germany like from 1900 through 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, yeah. um, universities had fencing teams. Yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. taken it was taken very seriously by the uh, participants. And it was a sign yeah. of real manhood and macho to uh, to be good at that. And uh, yes. a lot of the, um, not to get into this in the perverse sense, but a lot of the guys who were later German officers and stuff, they're, they'd have scars on their faces from from the other guy's uh, sword or what do you call mm. it um, sword what do you call it um yeah that's what, uh, yeah and that was like a, a mark of uh, distinction because that showed uh, you were really doing the real sword fighting or fencing i mean parts and of the not sword fighting fencing and um uh when you see photos of a lot of the german officers of that time they had big scars from uh being you know caught on the face and um, so Hans Niesentos is uh, is uh, elaborating a little bit German high society in best universities. I've been to a university, but only uh, for uh, three semesters. Um, so I never graduated and I, I was never in, in those uh, circles. So apologies. Right, right, right. What's the oldest university still in Germany? Would that be University of Heidelberg? I have I to think research. It might be. Well, it's okay. It's not important. I'm just... Uh, right. And the women would be attracted to the most scarred. Mm. Yeah, because it shows <clears throat> real virility and toughness and bravura. And bravura. I can't even say, I can't speak properly now. It's too late. And your bravery, correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know who was the greatest, uh, well, you know, 
Hollywood movies, they had a lot of uh, guys with sword fights and stuff like that. And they were, you know, whatever. I, that's kind of whatever. Hands, knees, and toes. Yeah, that's all correct. That's right. I'm not that old. Hands, knees, and toes. Hmm. Well, so Jamie got his uh, chocolate calendar thing. Yes, finally, with a yeah. with a long delay, uh, he he finally got it. Uh, did he did he show it on on air? No, no. He said he uh, got it on the sixth or the seventh, and yeah. so he had to eat all the chocolates from the first to the seventh to catch up. Yeah, life is hard. Yeah, well, that's a tough ordeal, right? And. Um, but he got two of them, is that correct? Two varieties? That is true, for Mrs. Opulence and for him. And uh, Minnie Opulence, his daughter, also got one. Right, she got um, the, the daughter got the kinder. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And um, the, the married couple got the uh, luxury one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. No, I enjoyed, uh, you know, I was on vacation and I enjoyed catching up as well. Uh, we returned on the 7th as well. So um, it was uh, it was a feast uh, catching up and uh, yeah yeah opening all those windows in, yeah in Italy uh, did you say that Spy Who Loved Me was filmed in Cortina or what was the name of the no it was uh, for Yoras only that was filmed in Cortina Cortina right so mm -hmm. I, I was watching earlier today the original Pink Panther movie with yes. David Niven and mm -hmm. Peter Sellers and there's a lot there it's filmed there. Yes, it's also filmed Most in Cortina, the film. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, holy cow, just spectacular! Yeah, unfortunately, many of the scenes have been uh, done in in studios, just like Hollywood usually sure, does. Right. So the the amount of uh, on location shots in Cortina is is quite limited. Yeah, but um, the the scenery shots of being there are just extraordinarily yes. incredible. Unfortunately, that yeah. that skiing area uh, that you also see in in. Um, uh, in uh, for your eyes only is now a private uh, it, it's now a private venue so when you go to a cortina um, and you have the, uh, the the lift ticket for for all the uh, the beautiful places there you can't reach there uh, the, the place is called Mietre and it used to be open a couple of years ago um, but now they privatized the lift and it's only f um, for, I think there is an exclusive resort there now. Uh, mm -hmm. So this skiing area is now off limits, unless you, you're you willing to hike with your skis on your uh, back uh, for an hour or two, uh, mm -hmm. then you can reach to there. Um, do you think that uh, beautiful, blonde, beautiful, beautiful European blonde women are all over the place in Cortina skiing? And you can um, hang out with them at the uh, at the hotel, the chalet, and be pr get pretty. Yeah, with the hotel, it's a it's a sad story because uh, what what used to be the place, the Miramonti Hotel, uh, the Miramonti is now closed. Um, uh -huh. I, I've been there um, in February, um, and uh, it was open there, but you could you could breathe that that this is this is gonna end so miramonti was mm. the place where roger moore stayed and mm -hmm. uh, there are also some 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 location shots um uh, where he enters the beautiful terrace of of his presidential suite mm -hmm. and has a look over the valley of cortina and yeah now the the hotel is is closed uh, i managed to to go there and uh, have a look and it's a sad sight to see all the the windows are closed uh, no cars are parked there. Really, no, kind of like the Catskill Mountains uh, hotels. It's all gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's right. sad to see. Mm. Really. When you were a kid, uh, did your schools uh, have field trips? Uh, once, once a year, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of places did uh, in elementary, junior high, or high school? What kind of places did uh, did they take the kids to? Oh, that is a good question. I only remember that the, I think yesterday we we visited the zoo, but that was when we were young. Right. Um, one um, uh, one destination of uh, of uh, those field days that we had was a castle nearby. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't have really fond memories of those excursion day uh, excursion days. I'm I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, did the school ever send the kids to Neuschwanstein? 
Uh, no, no, um, not on my uh, not on my school. Probably that that was a destination with other schools. Um, that is possible, but not with my school. Right. Have you ever been there yourself? Yes. Yes, plenty of times. Yeah. And how would you sum up uh, the first time you, as you approach that and you get to see the whole thing in person? How would you describe that? Um, I was there together with my parents, and we booked um, an excursion. Um, so you, you can see it from 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 the outside. Yeah. Uh, th there is a place uh, uh, which is called Marienbrücke, where where you have a beautiful site on on the castle. Um, and we also booked the tour inside. Mm -hmm. And Neuschwanstein itself is underwhelming. Um, it's it's not that pompous. You have to keep in mind that is built on a mountain, right. so everything. Uh, all the material had to be carried up on the, on the mountain. Unbelievable. So, so a, a castle in the, in the valley, just like uh, Versailles or uh, the bigger ones at the Kimsee, um, are much easier to build. Um, so the spectacular um, castles are not on the mountain; they are in the valley. Yeah, and yeah. that is a lesson that I learned. Well, the king, I... he was like a nutcase, wasn't he? Or he went nuts. Very, yeah, very much. You, you have to be a, a nutcase, and he he almost got broke, and uh, uh, his uh, his citizens were not very happy about his projects because uh, they, at the end of the day they had to pay for that with yeah, their, he, um, their taxes. I don't know. I don't remember the full story. When it was completed, he he only lived there for one day or something, and then he died. And... For for a short time, uh, short period of time. Not sure if it's only one day. I oh, think for, he yeah, lived a little time. I wonder if uh, when he was there at the castle, up on top of the mountain there, enjoying the luxurious life of royalty, if he ever told his personal chef, you know, make me a tuna sandwich. <laughs> you know, on Italian bread, uh, with oil and vinegar, and no shredded lettuce. I want real lettuce. Maybe. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they had tuna there, because tuna is, is not a sweet water fish. So the question of keeping it cool on the way to right. Bavaria will be an issue they would have to you know transport it in blocks of ice from yeah how do you how do you get blocks of ice before and then schlep it all the way up the mountain be a, a real ordeal yeah. wow so he probably ate like uh uh deer and wild animals yeah, and the nearby lakes have uh, have yeah. delicious fish. Yes, yeah, and, uh, sweetwater fish. Animals like deer and stuff that uh, people would shoot for him you know, to cook up. I think he, he was hunting himself. Uh huh. You know that correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you eaten rabbit? Yes, I told you the story, and you probably. I don't remember, it. but I'm I'm fascinated with eating a rabbit. And uh... yeah. okay, so if you if you told it, you told it. It's okay. Yeah. Well, anything going on in the watch world you'd like to talk about, or? Um, yes, um, yes and no. So Marcelo is gonna uh, unveil a heavy hitter today. Not sure what. Yeah, what he yeah I watched his show this morning, and it was just nonstop. I can't believe I'm gonna get it. I can't believe I'm mm. gonna get this watch. I mean, and it just went on for hours and hours. I can't believe I'm gonna get this. I'm mean, like, yeah, it's unbelievable. Like, okay, you got it. You get it. All right, yeah. So. Uh, crappy oh, to... someone's gonna say did you hear crappy hating on Marcelo he's such a negative he's a hater uh, I, I wouldn't say that that you're a hater um I in fact I know what uh, which watch uh, Marcelo is getting mm -hmm. and it's really mind-blowing that he he's getting it um, really so his his ex uh, his excitement is understandable I okay would say. is it a watch that you've ever had or you would like to have yourself I will not comment on on that because okay. I, I don't want to give hints Right. Okay. What What was interesting is I followed a discussion on on Archie Luxury, where my friend, my good friend JJ, um, uh -huh. revealed his new AP, and uh, he commented then on on people who are jealous and criticize his new acquisition and everything. And two minutes later, the topic was Marcelo's new watch, and the comment was. Yeah, if he gets this particular watch, this this won't be fitting his personality, so it would be a contradiction. Mm. So I'm I'm asking myself, who who is jealous now? So. Oh, I'm not jealous. No, no, no. But uh, but yeah. JJ certainly uh, voiced some jealousy. 
uh, uh, Wait, on his comments JJ, when he was talking about JJ, you sensed some jealousy in JJ about the Marcelo acquisition? Yes, because he really? would never get the watch that Marcelo is getting. Is it because it's so rare or so yeah. expensive? Or... Yes. Really? It's really special, believe me. Okay, well. Okay, so... Um... Okay, I have a couple of guesses, but I would have no idea. So yeah, okay. I can't, uh, I can't go closer because I don't want to to spoil. Yeah, it, exactly. But... Okay, that's that's good. Yeah. Other than that, um, and I've been heavily criticized for that as well. You know, every time I'm <laughs> I'm saying something, uh, people go after me because there is a certain narrative out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I was commenting on the, on the recent um, Phillips auctions. Mm -hmm. And one of my observation was that that certain FP Jean watches uh, did not perform perform very well in the range of the estimates. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And there was a question by Jay Gray, who said, uh, "Do you think that uh, that recent comments from FP Jean have something to do with that, and that um, uh, that investors are now pulling out of the brand and so on?" Now I, I'll give you a little bit of context because uh, for sure you, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, so F, uh, FP Jean um, is uh, is dominated by its owner uh, um, uh, François Paul Jean, um, who who is a genius watchmaker, mm -hmm. uh, but a very problematic character in in real life. He's a little bit of a, an Elon Musk, I would say, in mm -hmm. his public appearance. Now, uh, artists are always a little bit difficult to handle in, in social life, I would say. Um, and uh, F.P. Jorn is probably not an exception to that. So he has a very arrogant attitude sometimes. And um, apparently there was a collector's meeting. And uh, after... Uh, some intake of alcohol, he he misbehaved. That is that is what's out there. Um, mm -hmm. Not sure what really happened, but he he was drunk, and it caused some of his his high profile collectors. You can imagine when you're in, invited by Jean Paul uh, Jean uh, uh, Francois Paul Jean uh, himself, um, you must be a high profile collector, a special collector of his brand, mm -hmm. and um, his comments led some of the collectors leaving the room. Um, really? And, what did he say? What kind of comments? We we don't know for sure. There are rumors that there are some videos out there, but it got really nasty. That that is what we know. And I mean, like, did he did he talk like a certain YouTuber screaming at people? Or? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I right. don't know. It's just what we know is he misbehaved and uh, uh, let some some of his high profile collectors who knows a little bit about his attitude. Um, they they left the room. Wow! And how how yeah. recent was this? Uh, I think uh, only two or three weeks ago. Really? I'll look into that. I mean, I'll look up see if there's any stories about what kind of comments he was saying. Yeah, at the moment uh, the the YouTubers who know it, uh, I think there are some videos out there which are not okay. really published at the moment. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so everybody is is pretty careful because nobody really wants to to destroy the brand. Uh, but there is a speculation out there, and I think it makes sense um, because now is he is he Swiss or French or I I don't know uh, if he's French or Italian. I, I've, right. Yeah. I don't know. He yeah he's just a little bit temperamental, and now people just imagine. So so the the F P Jean hype is a hype. Mm -hmm. So. His watches are bloody expensive, but um, most of them um, uh, trade uh, above retail. So uh, let's say a, a watch costs 200,000 uh, retail and the, the, the market price is 500,000. So that right. attracts a certain kind of uh, collector yeah. who are interested in, in investing their hard earned cash. Right. Now imagine the boss or the owner or well, his his name is on the watches. Misbehaves, mm -hmm. and uh, it will be a big scandal, probably like TPG when when the video con comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens then with uh, with my investments? So there are questions. Yeah. So oh, let's just speculate. Uh, Guy Gadwas says anti-Semitic comments. We don't know, but whatever he said, if they're that foul, 
the brand value can be so, you know, severely diminished. Yes. And everybody who bought it because they think it's going to be a, a great investment uh, is, is screwed. Yes, but then that will be a Maybe. domino effect because uh, those high profile collectors are then selling, uh, which uh, then influences the market because supply is suddenly there. Right. Um, and uh, probably the demand is not that high, which results then in falling prices. And uh, that will have uh, then a domino effect uh, to other collectors who are. Yeah, the... I mean, if the FP Journe watches were retailing it brand new for uh, $7,000, they wouldn't, nobody would give a shit. So they have so, to be priced at fifty thousand dollars or whatever. Yeah. So, so that was was what what the discussion was all about and uh, the question was all about. And I said I can sense that some of of uh, the collectors who had no problem paying uh, two times, three times of retail uh, on a watch auction are now holding back because uh, they want to see what he really said, mm -hmm. and uh, they they they're observing for sure the um, uh, the situation. Yeah. Uh, but certainly, uh, the, the hype is a little bit held back. That is what I said. Right. And then okay. the next morning, I've right. been criticized for uh, for dooming and gloaming uh, FP Jean. That was just my opinion, and that was right. just my observation. Uh, I don't want anything to uh, bad to happen happen to uh, FP Jean. Um, I appreciate his watchmaking. Uh, in my opinion, the finishing of his watches is not the best it's good but it's not the best but um, his constructions are genius and uh, the world would be more boring without him um, but his his brand and his watches attract the wrong people and many of the people are only interested in, in investing or are only in, invest uh, interested in, in the hype value uh, that currently is you know, I've seen is... I've seen his picture, the pictures of his watches, and mm -hmm. for me, I'm just not interested in terms of the you know the uh, design or how it looks. Mm -hmm. I think the yeah. Gronenfeld, whatever the name is, Gronenfeld, Gronenfeld, Grunefeld, Grunefeld, just totally blows away the FP Jorn watches and almost most stuff. Yeah, yeah the difference between Grunefeld and uh, and FP Jorn is uh, FP Jorn really made some some groundbreaking um, constructions and inventions. Uh, that uh, Grunefeld, uh, they're just right at the beginning. So the ver ah, variety right. of, of complications is much higher with FP Jean. I see. So say you go to a uh, black tie cocktail party in Berlin or Hamburg, and everybody there is uh, in the elite social classes, very wealthy, powerful, okay? And... Uh, you're talking to a guy there who's like the CEO of, uh, you know, some incredible German company like uh, Mercedes, let's say. All right. And you happen to notice he's wearing a long jeans, $3,000 long jean. Mm. Okay. Would you compliment him on his watch or just not say anything? I wouldn't say anything. Isn't that interesting? But you know that, um, that industrial bosses and um, heads of states they're hiding their precious watches. Um, it's it's pretty well known that, uh, for example, um, uh, Macron, uh, the French president, has right. incredible watches. And uh, every time he's leaving the house, um, he straps on a cheaper watch because he don't want mm. to be he doesn't want to be caught with an expensive watch on the list. There was a previous president of France ten or so, or maybe twenty years ago. I don't remember, mm. and he wore a swatch. And was that Sarkozy? The, the, or I, I don't remember the guy's name, but okay. um, I think it was Mitterrand. Yeah, he couldn't give. He didn't, mm. Not Mitterrand. It was somebody else, and okay. uh, he, he didn't give a shit. He says, "Yeah, it's a swatch." You know, he, just, that's, yep. he was happy to wear it, which is fair. I mean, because all he cared about was what time it is. Yeah, we we are we are a, a very inbred uh, circle here. Uh, inbred. We, yes. we what what uh, what other people are wearing on their wrist. Uh, I'm pretty sure the majority out there. Couldn't care less how, right. how much the, the, the watch that you wear. Exactly right. Yeah. What maker is it? It is. Now, what about nose rings? Are there? Are you into <laughs> nose rings? Are Am I attracted to nose rings? Yeah. Are there luxury nose rings? Because that's quite a thing here in Portland and in other really? decadent, decaying American cities. If people, you know, um, 
they, they get into these nose rings and piercings and shit. What if you went to that same, as I described, uh, black tie cocktail party and you met the chairman of, um, I, I don't know, you know, well, uh, Krupp's, the mm. coffee making company, etc. And he's, he's got a nose ring and a long jeans. Would you, would you say, wow, nice nose ring. Is that nice nose ring? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure about the US, but I think it's the same in the US. Those kind of piercings are a little bit frowned. So right. you you can wear that in private probably. But I, well, here they just you just see people with the, the, their heads are completely pierced with with the uh, yeah, but giant the, bolts of steel, you know. Yeah, uh, so I guess the, uh, you could buy a nose ring and stainless steel or um, yeah. 914 those, those L or platinum white gold you know but now There's i bet a... you i bet you there are webs uh youtube groups about nose rings and some company some guy just introduced let's say a bronze nose ring and the people are talking about oh you don't want that bronze nose ring because it's going to get pitted and change colors it won't look good the same way we talked about bronze watches you know not sure if I told you that I had a friend um, who, who was very much into to Uhrwerk watches and mm -hmm. um, he has a body modification studio in, in Cologne. Mm -hmm. um, very smart guy, actually. Um, he body to... modification, it's just yes. unbelievable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah because it's a, it's a wide field, um, <laughs> what he does. And um, it was fascinating, but, but not really my thing. Definitely um, not. No, but he showed me uh, what what he's doing. Um, he has videos and uh, pictures and everything. It's a, it's an interesting field. And he himself had had uh, <laughs> quite some some modification. He, oh, I, I can't look at people. You know, there are people. Who, I saw this in Japan the first time. Um, yeah. They they take their earlobes and uh, they stick a piece of like a round thing inside yeah, it's called their a flesh tunnel. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know what it's called and. Um, yeah. I saw some people in Japan with that who I was talking to, and because they were with yeah, somebody but, else, and I couldn't look at them. That is harmless. That is harmless. I couldn't harmless. look at them. I mean, what's wrong with somebody yeah. to want to do that? So, so he, for example, had a split tongue. He he That's, does tongue yeah. splitting. Sick. Now, is not that a sign of mental derangement? He he told me the motive of of uh, tongue splitting uh, is a sexual one because. Um, certain sexual practices uh, that involve the tongue I, I consider that a sign of mental derangement yeah slicing your tongue in half is just and it's it's bloody bloody dangerous whatever because... sexual enjoyment you may get from some perverse activity yeah. uh, the fact that you're going to slice your tongue in half is just beyond sick yeah i can't believe that that would be allowed you know mutilating people it's a gray field and it's very dangerous because if if you split a tongue uh you could you could lose a lot of of blood so you yeah. could bleed to death if uh, if that is done done wrongly you would think if anybody is going to do it it would have to be a surgeon yeah not a guy with a studio with a sign that says open for business uh, tongue yeah. splitting yeah come get your tongue, tongue splitting special uh get a free uh five ounces of edibles with your with a with a tongue with a tongue splitting well, talking about edibles, uh, this body modification is very close uh, by to uh, experimenting with all kind of drugs because oh, yeah, you yeah. certainly experiment with uh, with everything. Yeah, it's um, it's just uh, insane, insane behavior. Yeah, he had an implanted magnet, for, uh, for example. So where he uh, on his hand, on his hand. So what he part could... of his hand? Uh, on, on on the back of his hand, he had an implanted magnet. Mm -hmm. About how big? Of uh, it was one centimeter in diameter. One centimeter. So, so he could pick up uh, then then iron parts and I found see. It funny. And for what reason would he implant a one centimeter magnet into his uh, hand? Just for the fun of it, as a conversation piece, <laughs> he made that. Holy shit! When you visited him him at home, he had three real skulls. I didn't ask him how, uh, where he got them. Human skulls? He, yeah, yeah, human skulls. Yeah. Well, he probably got them on Amazon. 
you know, probably yes. or you know, skulls know. are us or someplace like that <laughs> you know maybe they have an office in uh in new guinea they ship direct from new guinea dhl his his girlfriend had uh, had um, um, a, a big piece of art on her uh, uh under her chest and on her belly which is um which is called a slicing so um, you, you know those round tables uh, the, those round windows in french cathedrals uh, mm. that that uh, that looked very intricate and uh, she had this kind of uh, of pattern um uh, under her chest and uh, on her belly uh, which was sliced in so those are scars and um you mean not tattoo painted on it's not tattoo painted um it it was sliced he's using a scalpel uh, a scalpel and then slices the skin and the, the scar that is left there on that that was uh, his girlfriend yes mm -hmm. so he's a mental case and so was his girlfriend probably yes they both she, need a she was psychiatric very nice. medication <laughs> but that's just self mutilation yeah yeah but certainly it must be yeah but um as long as they're just doing it to themselves willingly Okay, there, it's a mental situation, but it's not being forced on anybody, you know. Unbelievable. So yes, he mm. he has uh, that studio, and he does all that that weird shit. Uh, but then he has uh, has tattoo artists. He doesn't do uh, tattoos. Right. Now, how did you meet this guy? Was he over <clears> at the uh, James Bond get together or something? Or? That is a very good question. How I met. <laughs> How did I meet him? Was he at a Sotheby's <laughs> auction for James Bond stuff? And no. Uh, oh yes, yeah. Now I know. Yes, um, uh, I had a I had a James Bond web page, and he was also a big James Bond fan. And mm -hmm. uh, over my my James Bond web page, um, we got in touch, and uh, we we started emailing. He contacted you, or you contacted? Yes, mm -hmm. he contacted me. And at that, but you didn't know who he was or how he no, 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 at, no. at that no, time. No. Just another James Bond aficionado, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then when you met him the first time, did you think to yourself, oh, God, get me out of here? Well, I was fascinated because that is a total different world uh, than mine, which is really boring and very conservative. Right. So it was interesting to to see. Um, and at a at a certain time, he he unfriended me. Then uh, after a couple of really? years, really, yeah, not my friend. Why Why do you think he unfriended you? Uh, we we had uh, we had some some disagreement uh, over uh, over general way of life. He he thought uh, that uh, my car was not appropriate to me, and um, uh, I this should... is a guy who cuts his tongue in half. <laughs> yeah, and he's telling should... you what kind of car you should get. Yeah, I, that my house what, is. What is car? Boring. The Mini. No, uh, at that time uh, I was driving a Saab. And what's wrong with the Saab? I told him I don't care. Uh, uh, the Saab serves me well and uh, never, never got me, uh, gave me any any trouble. And he he thought that uh, that I should change my lifestyle and. Uh, Said, I'm not going to change it. I'm is Saab happy. still a? Are they still in business? I don't. No, know. no, they went uh, bust. Because yeah, now that I think about it, I haven't seen a Saab in twenty mm. years, probably. Yeah, the old uh, uh, Saabs are still out there, but. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I, in Sad fact, story. In the last, since I've been in Port, I've never seen a Saab in the last five years anywhere. Mm. Yeah, but Saab yes. is not a Portland kind of car. Yes, yeah, Saab, uh, Saab was, was one of the victims of the general uh, of of the Detroit crisis. I, I don't know when when was that? Two thousand twelve. Don't know. Yeah, where uh, all Detroit automakers really were in trouble because Saab was uh, was part of General Motors back then. Oh, really? Uh huh. Yeah. How about that? Well. Wow. Hmm. You know, you wonder about people like that man and his girlfriend mm. uh, when they slice their tongue in half and scar up their, you know, their abdominal area mm. and stuff. What other kind of perverted shit they've done that they don't tell you about? Yeah, I would say that there was a big difference in, in power between him and her. So he was a very dominated person and uh, she was she was super nice and very, uh, very low profile. 
not sure whose idea was that with all the body modification on her. Hmm. Um, yeah, you never know. Wow, I have a tattoo. Really? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's on, it's on my upper right arm. I got really? it. Uh, yeah, when Joe Biden ran for president, I was so so impressed. Hmm. So I went to the tattoo place because they're all over, they're all over the place here in Portland, and I said I want you to write corn pop on my arm. Mm -hmm. And do you, do you know the corn pop story? No. Oh, uh, yeah. Demented Joe told some crazy story about when he was a lifeguard back as a 20 year old kid or something, and he got into a fight with a local gang tough guy named Corn Pop, and uh, he he got a chain and a knife and they were going to go at it and then you know they both agreed to move on and it's just an imbecilic imaginary crazy insane story but hmm. and then uh, corn pop became a popular like funny meme because it's uh, it was so funny but anyway so you were no, pretending I, I, then being part I was of pretending. that game. no i don't i don't get tattoos yeah i know i don't it's see the point of it i don't see the point of it now uh, if I'm with a woman and she has a tattoo, it's it's okay, as long as it's, you know, minimal and uh, not, uh, you, know, uh, you know, just insane, hmm. you know. So, well, uh, you're you're but a I bachelor. No tattoos, you know. So yeah. you're a bachelor, and if you have a no tattoo policy, uh, that will limit your your uh, your your odds. Uh, well, uh, severely, I would. Here say. in Portland, there are no odds because any woman that's here is, is a 350 pound a shaved head lesbian, basically with an Antifa <laughs> a Bernie Sanders t shirt. So, mm. yeah. But well, um, um, if if I was if the woman had something like a petunia on her on her belly, I go like, well, or on her breast, or on her arm, or on her butt. You go, know, wow, well, okay, it's kind of stupid, but all right, you know. But if she's got, uh, you know, a picture of a tattooed image of Barack Obama, you know, full size on her back, then that's that's a done. That's a definite deal breaker. I want a lot of distance from me and her. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Well. Because <laughs> there are people uh, who would have gotten who you know, Obama tattoos and. Trump tattoos, and even you find these, you know, well, I won't even say it, but yeah, anyway. So. Hmm. So what time is it? I should wrap it up. It's uh, 1226 Tuesday oh, morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I'm going to uh, have an extra large pizza with double pepperoni and then go to sleep. Oh, and then you can sleep? No, I'm, I don't eat that at, at midnight. No. I wanted to to talk to you about my air fryer, my new one. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because I broke it in yesterday. How how much time? Because I'm really uh, I'm a combination of three things. I want to hear your air fryer story because mm. I have a feeling it may be as good as your coffee maker story, which was really mm. good. Okay, uh, but I, I do want to get to bed, but I'm also kind of hungry for something, so I don't know. Let's go for the air fryer. Let's do it. Well, it's not that, that spectacular. Um, when I when I said I bought the air fryer, Dodger approached me and uh, convinced me to to buy the same air fryer just like he has. Ah, and it arrived before our uh, vac vacation, mm -hmm. uh, so I couldn't use it. And yesterday I was starting the breaking in process because not sure if it's only that model or all air fryers. Are really smelling heavily of uh, like plastic <clears throat> when you use them uh, in the first couple of times. Mm -hmm. So yesterday I was running uh, four cycles each 25 minutes on full heat, um, and after that I cleaned all the um, the plates and everything, um, and did the heating element and started all over again. And it still smells uh, a lot uh, now after Dodger's recommendation. <clears throat> I'm I'm putting a little bit uh, a little um, cup with vinegar and lemon juice, and that should do the trick. That they're mm. not smelling. Now, uh, 
It does. Is it an air fryer that has shelves, or is it the basket type? It it has shelves. Okay, and can you tell the tell us the brand name? Um, I can. Um, I forgot it, so I have to check my Amazon order. Let me check. One okay. Because we want to know if it's like the Mister Coffee Walmart brand or some you know made in Italy or Switzerland. Luxury. Doctor, am I allowed to reveal the model, uh, or would, would you like to keep that secret because I was following Dodger's recommendation? Well, it's just an air fryer. Yeah, I'll, so I'll I guess it's know. okay. So, so the air fryer is called Profi Cook. Can you spell like that, pro, please? Uh, P R O F I. One second, I'll uh, I'll try to type it in in the comments. One second. I think you can also get it in, in the U.S. Okay, yeah, here it is. I see it. Never heard of that brand. It's um, Profi Cook. There it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's on Amazon.de. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and Amazon.uk. Okay, well, I can look at some Google images to get a picture of it. Yeah, do you want to pull it up? Well, yeah, well, I'll. The, uh, the I don't know if it's the exact model, but um, um, well, I'll just use. I'll just enlarge this page, and we can do that. Okay, so um, let's see if this will work. Hang on one second, please. I never heard of that brand, so it must be a quality brand. Otherwise, he wouldn't have. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you can get this model under different names um, because everything is made in China, probably. Mm. Um, okay, let's see if that shows up. Yeah, there it is. I'm going to enlarge the screen. The, so uh, this is just Google Images for yeah. Cook. So, so the one on the on the very right, is, uh, it is. On the top right. Yes, top right. Ah, okay. Let's see if I can enlarge that. That's a Ukrainian. Uh, post. Uh, I think the, there's a Russian text. Yes. Okay. And uh, but just for the picture. So there we go. So, so the trick with that air fryer that looks like is... mine. That looks very close to my um, Instapot with the two shelves. Okay. Very nice. Do you have a rotating basket as well? Yeah, it has a rotisserie thing you can snap in there. But do and... you have that basket or only that uh, skewer? There's two shelves. And then you can uh, put a skewer through a chicken and it'll twirl around while it's cooking. Mm -hmm. Or you can use it as a basket and put in like vegetables or stuff. Yeah, probably then you have the same, uh, just like Dodger and me. It was very uh, the, similar. Yeah. The rotating basket uh, really um, sold it uh, for me. Um, because I know that, uh, that on normal air fryers, if you make French fries, you have to shake them after a, a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, with a rotating basket, that is not necessary. So you're saying that it um, it has a factory smell or something? Or? Yes, uh, but the the smell changed now. So uh, the first two cycle, the uh, the smell of plastic was really dominant, mm. uh, and now it smells a little bit burnt. Um, so the plastic smell is gone, and uh, it, it smells like uh, something has has burned. Well. Did you buy this on a website or at a store? On uh, at Amazon. Well, if it's not acceptable, you can easily return it. Exactly. Pretty, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, if it's if it's not if it's creating a bad smell like that, I would just repack it and bring it to the uh, shipping store and send it back. Well, from from what I'm hearing, um, uh, there is an issue because those shelves are Teflon coated and uh, they they smell. Uh, you, you have to break in an air fryer. That is that is what I learned. In the last couple of uh, of days, ah. and I'll give it a, a, a try. And if it uh, continues to to smell, then I'm going to return it. But I have hopes that the smell will be gone because uh, apparently now the heating element is just smelling a little bit. Ah, well, I, that would be possible, I guess, when the heating element the first time it starts smelling and smoking, yeah. and then that goes away. So maybe I don't know. You know, only nine found... people. We have there's only nine people watching the show, and the content tonight is just spectacular. Um, air fryers, tuna fish, American America Samoa, 
uh, 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 Ludwig II, uh, German castles. Uh, tuna, Unbelievable that this tuna is sub sandwiches. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, right. Just amazing. Okay. Anyway. Wow. So yeah, nothing more to be told at the moment. Uh, it's right. smelling, and we will uh, now. So so Dodger gave me an instruction um, uh, how to break it in, and the last uh, step would be to have a little kind of cup. Uh, with a mixture of vinegar and lemon juice and you cook that for three minutes and let it rest then for another 15 and that should uh, should eliminate the smell then oh okay sounds sounds like and if it doesn't work then you you can always return it so. yeah yeah i have um, i have also the philips air fryer here uh, totally packed up that is my plan b if uh, that doesn't work uh, i'm just taking the the boring usual Philips. what do you mean you had the Philips uh, is that something you also bought just yes brand new? because it was Black Friday and the Philips uh, air fryer was heavily discounted I see uh, so I thought I'm I'm buying the Philips just as plan B uh, because when I find out that this is not working uh, I have to pay more for for the Philips then but when you bought this one hmm. you had no idea that it would be any kind of issues with it but you bought the was, Philips anyway. I was reading, I was reading from uh, from reviews that the smell uh, could be an issue, but I'm also reading that the smell on Philips is an issue. So I was not sure. Uh, Dodger recommended it. Uh, it was Black Friday, so I had to uh, to act. So I bought both. Uh, I Got bought it. both. I understand. Now let's just uh, speculate here. Say that the smell doesn't go away, so you decide to return this uh, profi cook to amazon yes. then you unpack the phillips and uh, you get the same bad smells and they don't mm. go away mm. so disappointingly you repack that and send that back for a refund at that point having had two bad units will you just give up on an air fryer or will you go for a third try that is a very good question and i would say it depends on if the smell transfer uh, transfers on the food and I think French fries are good to try that out, right? Um, if uh, the the French fries are tasting like plastic or like burnt, um, right. that that would be a deal breaker, and probably I seems would like yeah, it. seems like uh, French fries are the uh, <clears throat> like you know when you look at Amazon and all the ones they have for sale and all the photos on each unit, they usually have a picture with air fry with the uh, French fries. Mm. So yeah, French French fries are not that. Um, uh, that heavily tasted just like a like a marinated yeah. chicken or something like that so right. i think you can sense the um if there is plastic smell or something then uh, resting on the french fries you will find that out now would sausage go with the serving of french fries uh i am very conservative i prefer my sausage uh, f from the barbecue ah. i would not air fry a sausage just. right but as on the dinner plate can you have on the same plate sausage and uh french fries yeah, sure. Yeah, I think that would go. Well, definitely yeah, would go. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. The famous currywurst that you find so disgusting Ugh. is always served with uh, uh, with French fries. Right, right. Okay, yeah. Well, a hot dog you can certainly have with French fries or some kind of oh yeah, yeah. sausage kind of looking thing. We serve everything in with French fries. Mm -hmm. What do Germans, how do Germans refer to French fries? Is there a special word? We call it, uh, we call them pommes. Oh, pommes, okay. Because yeah. like potato was pomme de terre. Yeah, pomme de terre, uh, the French word, yes. Right. And you call them pommes? Yeah. Do you say hair pommes or fraulein pommes? Or <laughs> uh, pommes? No, no uh, pommes are are, um, uh, are not male or female. They, they are um, um, a plural. It's right, a, I got it. Yeah. Right, got it. Oh, how about that? All right. Yeah, the famous order is Pommes Bahnschranke, which means French fries uh, uh, railway barrier. Uh, the, the barriers on the street that go down when a, when a train is crossing are right. red and white. Right. And so Pommes Bahnschranke means ketchup and mayonnaise because it's red and white. So those, those guard kind of gates that go down at a... Uh, mm. 
you know, uh, a Soviet uh, immigration checkpoint or at the train station. <laughs> yes. What, what are those called? Well, I, I call them uh, rail uh, barriers or, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what, what they're actually called right now. I can't think what they're mm -hmm. called, but um, yeah, yeah. But they're called a Baum, what do you say? Bahnschranke. Bahn Schranke is the barrier. The, uh, that I see, okay. Barrier. Bahn Schranke. Yeah, Bahn Schranke. Sch Schranke. Whatever, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Dodger okay. says mine has stopped smelling, so there is hope. Ah, okay, right. Uh, Poway, I burned a wrap in the air fryer last night, Frappy. Tried defending the sacred air fryer. Well, first off, did you follow directions on the package of what you cooked? Second, did you read the instruction packet, uh, instruction manual that came with the air fryer? Third, uh, was the temperature setting correct? How long did you air fry the fuck out of that thing too, you know? <laughs> so maybe the fault lies within. So, but, you know, try it again. <laughs> Jamie Opulence just sent me a picture. Not sure if he bought it, but he found a sausage maker. So, oh, <laughs> he man. sent me a picture right a now. A sausage maker? <laughs> yes. You mean like you put in the ground beef or the pork and you crank it? Yeah, one second, I'll, I'll show and you. And it comes picture. out like ground beef or something? Yes. With a, and a, you can fill a, you put a sausage uh, casing and mm -hmm. it fills up the casing? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Jamie is now seriously getting in, into that kind of stuff. So he's into the sausage making. Wow. You know, there was a Seinfeld episode where Kramer and Newman took over Jerry's apartment and they were making sausages. They had a sausage making machine. Right. Always pump. says, um, it's a cheaper air fryer. I had to slam the bucket in and the wrap must have lodged against a vent and it burned. Yeah, okay, so it was operator error. So, I mean, that's understandable. That can happen. So just try it again. It, it, I bet you it works out fine. Poway, what brand is your air fryer? Can you tell us? Is it some funny brand from Germany or Serbia or some country like that? Or is it... Uh, uh swiss made uh, german made uh, english made uh, chinese i'm sorry I, I put in the same sentence germany and serbia i didn't mean to equate those um, but uh, yeah i don't think serbia is known for producing air fryers so. i think they come all from china don't they? or coffee makers or toasters or yeah i read anything. somewhere that uh, philips air fryer uh, they have a cheaper brand which is called princess and uh, okay. virtually uh, uh, th those are the same air fryers, uh, just with a different label. Right. I never heard of uh, that brand. So Maybe Philips only... is uh, primarily European, but mm. uh, some products are Philips branded here. And Philips is a, is a quality brand, I think. You know, I bought uh, Philips uh, headphones. Uh, and other stuff I don't remember, but I have no. Pro I would have no problem uh, not choosing a Philips product. Okay, here's Poway. He says, uh, "My mum's is a Ninja." Well, that's a that's a good brand. Everybody who has a Ninja coffee maker or air fryer, they really like it. Uh, but mine is Gourmia, Gourmia from Costco. All right, uh, as I don't use it, that's probably it's probably a good unit. Costco wouldn't sell uh, defective bad stuff. Ivar, Serbia is known for producing crazy bears. Yeah, right. Rabid, uh, syphilitic brain bears is a problem. Oh, syphilitic, just uh, rabid brain disease bears. Wow. Bad, bad. Have you ever seen any products anywhere in Germany that, you know, in the supermarket or clothing store or anywhere, hardware store that says product of Serbia? I've never seen anything from Serbia. That is a good question. I, I, um, not a product, uh, but the most famous Serbian is is uh, is married to to a famous German football player, right. incredibly beautiful woman. Oh, really? And and very nice personality and Rolex ambassador. 
Really? Okay. But yes. um, in terms of a product, not yeah. we're not calling a woman a product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, now, now they do have uh, a wine that could be sold. Maybe wine stores here. Maybe they have wine from Serbia. That's possible. But um, uh, I, I don't know what comes from Serbia. You know, we can that Google. Serbia show I did a long time ago, the three part, or the the long. Uh, I probably covered that, but I bet you they have wine that's exported, so, which may be good or not. I don't know. But so uh, what? What I know is uh, Serbia or uh, the, the Yugoslav region. They had the famous sausage, which which is called sufjuk. Sufjuk. Um, sufjuk. What makes that it is, famous? That is a spicy kind of uh, um, sausage that you that you can fry in the pan or cook cook up. Ah, I see. Well, I don't like spicy anything, as uh, as I'm well known to have said, to say. Uh, Poway says his air fryer is very good for 50 pounds. Mm. It's actually faster at heating things than the Ninja, but the Ninja is a multi cooker. She does all sorts of meals in it. Oh, you're referring to your mom, okay? And pressure cooked soups. I see. So the Ninja model is uh, a really good multi cooker thing. Does it all. Yeah, now you're right. Uh, um, Serbian AKs, uh, rifles, firearms, Zastava. You can buy Zastava uh, firearms here in the U.S. And apparently, they're, the Serbian AKs are uh, very, very good. If there's one thing they know, it's uh, fighting. Apparently, so, they have good wine. Uh huh. No, well, no doubt. Yeah, I've seen Hungarian wine in wine stores here and uh, various European countries. So they probably do have Serbian wine uh, that can be found. Uh, but I, outside of the uh, firearms, I don't know. And wine, I don't know what else they export. Didn't they, they make a car? Uh, the Yugo? Yeah, the Yugoslavia. Yeah, the Yugo. That was an absolute disaster. When that came out, it was just like ridiculed, and nobody in their right mind would have bought it. It was just absolute junk. Yeah, I think they exported it to the U.S. And yeah, it yeah, it was an absolute, a running joke, and in, in most it was, of the it was a running joke that lasted for years. Yeah. I mean, yeah, nobody yeah. would have been caught dead in a Yugo. Yeah. It was just a major, you know, laughable product. It was so bad. Well, um, the the Yugo roots. Uh, from from a time where Yugoslavia uh, was uh, belonging to the Eastern Bloc, mm -hmm. so Soviet Bloc, and um, to defend those crappy cars a little bit, there was no alternative, and uh, yeah, right. So so they couldn't buy uh, European cars, so those mm -hmm. uh, Yugos or the East German Wartburgs and Trabants or mm -hmm. uh, Russian Ladas were the only ones that they could get. And the lack of competition right. um, was was a reason why uh, the quality was so inferior compared to probably the during Western the Western. Soviet uh, years. There would there would have been only one brand of air fryer, <laughs> if at all. If if the population could, if most of the population could have afforded it, hmm. there probably would have been only one brand, and it probably would have been a piece of shit that caught on fire as soon as you put a chicken in it. Yeah. You know when I uh, <clears throat> when I was uh, in, in uh, on vacation, um, we experienced something that that almost never happens here. We had mm -hmm. power outages in in the evening, mm -hmm. so suddenly we had no light, we had no internet, um, and uh, was that uh, due to some kind of car accident or explosion or no? Uh, one one was a scheduled uh, power out, and then um, a couple of uh, of hours later, it was already evening. This happened a couple of times, and uh, I don't know the cause. Uh, I didn't. How long ask. did it last? Um, Twenty minutes. Then the oh, power came no back. Yeah, that's no yeah but uh, then then it uh, went away. So so it went uh, the the entire night. Uh, but then we were sleeping. Yeah, but uh, if it's <clears> just a matter <throat> of hours or even overnight, your food in the fridge is still safe, you know. And uh, it's kind of fun when the power goes out. I've been through that many times. Hmm. Not from a hurricane or a storm, not from paying my bill, I mean. That's a joke. And um, I, I like it when the power goes out, because it's kind of it's fun. 
So, well, not when you're running a YouTube show. Well, correct. That's right. <laughs> okay. Um, Palway Higgins. Why do Germans rent and not buy their houses? Or am I mistaken? It's a rich country, lovely houses and neighborhoods. But unlike the UK where we buy, Germans don't have this obsession. Do you know what he's referring to? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's he's asking a good, good question. And there are statistics, for example, compared to our neighbors in France and Italy, um, the number of house owners is relatively low. Um, with with france i know that um if you're married and uh, have children uh, the um, the country heavily subsidizes loans um, that you uh, that you take to buy a house mm -hmm. um, we don't have this kind of thing in in germany so you're paying market prices and i would say that is that is one of the reasons why people don't buy houses because they're bloody expensive when the interest mm. rates are high. Mm -hmm. But wow. I can't give you a, a, a real qualified reply. Um, my parents had a house. I grew up. Um, uh, my father always told me a house is, uh, is something that you really have to, to own and try to, to, to get your own house. I, I was, I was living in a rented apartment in, in Hamburg because housing prices are simply too expensive for, for my pay grade. Um, but when I met Mrs. Higgins, she pushed me to uh, to buy the house that we're living in. So so she's responsible of moving me into house ownership. You didn't want to buy a house? Mm, yeah, I was on the fence. I had. Some, it's like always you, you have so many things uh, on your minds and money to spend. Uh, so you don't want to to take the burden, uh, but she ah, right. she hard pressed me and uh, we bought the house. And I don't regret it. You said you said to her, yeah, you said to her, I'm not buying a watch. I got my money uh, tied up in watches, back, and I've been saving money. The cash that I have is going to new watches. No, 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 no. Back back then, I was not the the watch collector and not the the James Bond collector. Ah, I right, had one right. watch, and um, selling watches um, for for a couple of years um made me survive but but not really much more right did so, you ever have a seiko as a daily wear oh yes yes i'm oh, a big really? seiko fan yeah right okay uh, another yeah. question here it says uh, oh kpr i was in belgrade a few months ago passing through buses falling apart can't pay by cash on buses have to download an app and pay through phone Sounds yeah, a little I hate, bit I, like Heathrow. I, I, hate, I hate having to download an app to use something. Yeah. Sounds a little bit like Heathrow, where Archie couldn't pay cash for the, his COVID right. test. So instead of him raging at the airport, I'm an Australian and I don't have the code. I can't get the code. He could have been, I'm a Serbian and I can't get the code. Well, who knows? Right. Now, Dodger, this is, I had a... Wartburg. Wartburg, yes. Wacht. That was a premium car in, in Eastern Germany. Wartburg. It was Wacht. cool. I could lift out and change the engine in two hours. What was a what is a or was a Wartburg? You can you can Google Wartburg. That was I'm tired of Googling. In, it's getting late. In Eastern Germany, they had two different cars. One was the Trabant and mm -hmm. the other one was the Wartburg, which was a little bit uh, premium. I've heard of a Trabant. I never heard of a Wartburg. No, Wartburg was was premium. Really? And uh, but it, it was still crap. So, right. What what kind of American car would that be compared comparable to? Oh, or like for example, a Toyota Corolla, Camry, you know, Japanese, whatever you know. Well, back then all all cars were sedans, so you, you don't have have those compact yeah, cars right, like right. you have at the moment. So it's it's hard to to find a yeah right a contemporary comparison. Okay, he says two-stroke engine air cooled. I have no idea what that means. Yeah, but then later they they uh, they moved to four-stroke uh, uh, Volkswagen engines, but the two-stroke was more easy to maintain. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Should I explain you the difference between two-stroke and four-stroke? If you're in the mood, <laughs> I'm always so, in the mood. Or the audience is always in the mood to be stroked. So two-stroke is is a is a simplified um, petrol engine, and you have to 
uh, to fuel uh, to to use a special kind of fuel that contains um, two percent of. Hey, hey Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Oh, Jamie, has, Jamie has a two-stroke engine as well. Jamie's in the car wash, apparently. Oh, oh that's what the noise was, car wash. Okay. Jamie, now, who, who, would, who would live stream from a car wash? Yeah. Jamie, Jamie I'll tell you who. The same kind of guy that would make his own sausage at home. Yeah. Did you buy that sausage maker, Jamie? Yeah, he's, he's either in a heavy rainstorm or in the car wash. Yeah, and you can see the car wash. Yeah, yeah. you can see the brushes. Yeah. So, uh, the, so what is the four stroke, four stroke compared to the two stroke? So, um, so um, uh, a petrol engine um, is uh, is is uh, the piston is running up and down, and every motion up or down is uh, counted as a stroke, mm -hmm. and um, a two stroke engine um, uh, uses two stroke. And then starts over again. A four-stroke engine is using four different strokes. I see. And the vibrations are low, and you you're having a different kind of. Petrol. So a car like a Mercedes sedan or a Lexus that would be a four-stroke. Everything is four-stroke, un uh, unless very very simplified change chainsaws or li very little um, motorbikes. Uh, they they run two I see. strokes. So a smell. piece of crap, a piece of crap Yugo would have yes. been a two-stroke, maybe. Yes, most of them had two, two strokes because the, uh, that was simple technology, and uh, they 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 didn't have the factories to produce four-stroke engines. Yeah. Now KPR is saying, what asking, what's the best-selling car in the U.S.? I don't know, but I would guess the Toyota Corolla. No, I think it's a Tesla Model Three. Oh no, uh, two, no, no, no I think Model be, Y. That couldn't be the best-selling car. <clears throat> it's expensive. I think uh, uh, worldwide, uh, the Tesla uh, Model Y is, at the moment is the best-selling car. Really? That's amazing. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't follow the car stuff. Yeah. But my guess, if it's not the Toyota Corolla, it certainly was the Toyota Corolla at some point. Yeah, Toyota Corolla is a very good seller. Yeah, because yeah, it's, uh, for the, it's expensive too, but for what you, you get, it's, a, it's just proven it's going to be a great car for you. I myself would never be caught dead in a Toyota Corolla. I would have to have a Hyundai Sonata for the extra luxury. But, um, right. Pally, all I know is she charges double for four stroke. <laughs> right. Let's try Jamie again. Hey, Mr. Opulence. Yeah, hi, crappy. Yeah. So, how was the car wash experience? Well, I've gone for the nine euro fifty one, the premium, the top premium. level. Top can you tier. move Jamie up so that we? Can oh, see right, him? right. Um, let me hold on. Let me. There he is. Jamie, did you buy that bloody sausage maker? No, that's no, <laughs> <laughs> no, mate. That's what. That's oh. the sort of thing you buy. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, so I'm... you didn't get the sausage maker? No. Okay. Did you Did you see it? Did you see it? I couldn't pull, oh, a, oh. pull the picture up for you. Yeah, it was a bit, uh, yeah. But that's the sort of thing Higgins would buy. Sure, right. No, I have my limits, and uh, I don't want to, to buy the carcasses and deal with the sausage making, so... Yeah. So I'm, I'm... Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. It's uh, The car wash is finishing, and there's punters behind, yeah. and I don't oh. want to hold them up. Right. Did you did you open the twelfth door today? Uh, no, I've I've got a slightly different strategy. I've I've opened them all actually, and I've put them what? all in the bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it was it, it was, wow. it, it was it That is outrageous. Bit... You're not you're not supposed to open any doors in uh, 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 in advance. That is that is not how it goes, Jamie. No, no. There's a reason. There's a reason. Uh... There just, is no reason. One. That is un-German no, to do. There's a reason. The reason I did it, I was getting, uh, I was getting anxiety having to try and eat a chocolate every day. 
Ah. So I just open the bowl and put them in a bowl, and you know, every few days I'll have one rather than one every day because they're really big. They're really big chocolates. Now, when yes. you were having your anxiety attack, did you rip the box to shreds as you took out the pieces, or? Uh, the the box was huge. I had to to get a, a big rubbish bag to take the two wow. boxes. They were huge. Wow, amazing. So, Jamie, that that is a very un-German way to deal with an advent calendar, I must say. I'm very disappointed by you. Yeah, well, I gave my reasons. Yeah, the, 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 you, you know, you could wait until 24th and then pull them all out. Mm. But you're not supposed to to do that uh, ahead. That is not that is not uh, what we do. Yeah, Dodger says the box was bigger than his house. <laughs> yeah, the box was ridiculously big. Now, Jamie, the, the quality of the chocolates, how would you rate them? Uh, I'd, I'd give them a 10. 10? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, Corbin, Corbin, Jamie, did Jamie pull the Advent Days chocolates before the days occurred? Occurred. That's like opening your presents early. Yeah, right. Yeah, that is outrageous. That's yeah, outrageous. I opened all of them. Yeah, I have to unfriend Jamie. I even, well, we, we don't, it just, yeah, crack you know, on. You know, Jamie, it's a good thing that you live in Spain and you did that there because if you opened up the boxes early in Germany, you know, you're going to get a knock at the door. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, yeah. you don't want to know what's going to happen. It's interesting uh, you, you bring up the topic of advent calendars. This morning, my, my daughter, she said that yesterday at school, she she was the one that got... So basically, they're doing a classroom advent calendar. And each day, a different student gets to open it and eat the chocolate. Mm. I thought that was very interesting. The penetration, the, the advent calendars have penetrated into schools, society. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's here. Yeah, we can Germans are sneaking in everywhere, you know yeah. that. Uh, can, you, can you air fry an advent calendar? <laughs> well, I don't know. Ask Curly. That's a curly subject. Right. No, I'm the air fryer guy, not him. So, oh, I thought anyway. Curly was. Oh, no. He, He's he the have Italian uh, no, he gelato takes all, no, he takes all of my stuff. And, he takes all of my stuff and then makes fun of it and insults everybody with it. And, and then, uh, yeah, and then he just yeah. uh, exploits all the other content out there. Okay. Um, so Dodger confirms 10 out of 10 for the content. Wow. And I must say, I'm very pleased every time I'm opening a, a window, the chocolate is really top notch. Uh, yeah, like the, the, the chocolate is it's thick. It's a, it's a really big lump of chocolate. That's why it's not, you know, it's probably overdosing each day. I, I didn't think oh. it would be that big. Very impressed. Uh, Higgins, do you remember the name of the brand? Of what yeah, you Reba. 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 I typed it in the comments. Okay, thank you. Because a lot, a lot of the supermarket calendars are like, you know, five euros or two euros, cheap, nasty. This was uh, like a 30, 35 euro calendar. It's, it's premium. Wow. So, yeah, very pleased. Very, very pleased. Pretty great. Reba. Okay, I'm going to look for that. Maybe it's on Amazon or one of those German products stores that have websites. And I bet you I could find it. But now it, it, it's old. It's out of date. I mean, it's... Yeah, yeah. you have to, to be, be prepared for next year. I have to wait for another year. Maybe they have a Hanukkah advent calendar. Mm, I doubt it. I doubt it. Right? Anyway. So, Jamie, where are you driving to? You going home? Or? I'm going to the office. Going to the office, right. I'm, I'm going to get the day. It's 10, it's 10 01. I just, uh, yeah, I'm going to get the day started and I'm going to have a good day. Right. Next show, next show, Jamie eats the Easter bunny chocolate eggs before Easter. Very good. Yep. Yeah, Higgins, Higgins has got my address. Send chocolate now. Send chocolate now. <laughs> 
Right. Are you looking forward to Marcelo's unboxing, Jamie? Um, oh, just trying to get out of the car. Uh, I'm not going to watch it, but I fully anticipate it to be something incredible. It is. It is. Yeah, Dodger. Uh, Dodger, hey, what do you? Oh, he's, Dodger's got an advent calendar. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's the same advent calendar. Ah, okay. And Dodger, Dodger didn't open all the doors, so Dodger has been a good boy. Why did you rip out the 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 doors? You're you're supposed to uh, to keep them. You're just opening the door. If you enter a hotel, are you ripping out the door? Usually, yeah. <laughs> okay. I think the unboxing. This is Dodge took about. What day is it today? Today is the twelfth. Oh. I think the unboxing of one window on the advent calendar is more exciting than any watch so, unboxing. Oh, it's the twelfth. Hang on. Live unboxing of the 12. Are the chocolates all the same, or is each no. window a different chocolate? It's different. very different, each one. Uh, My favorite was the uh, waf wafer. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wafer and truffle. Ah, look at that, an unboxing. There it is. Yeah, we have a Mozart cool. This isn't really the way to do it, but. Right. I sip it up upside down, it'll fall out. There we go. Look Dodger, are you? Look at, the size, look at that. The size of these. Well, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Dodger, are you, you are you hanging those Dodger? calendars on the wall? Yeah, on the back of the calendar, there's a circle. You can nail it into the wall. Yes. Okay. You're well, supposed to. It in the wall, yeah. How do you suggest I nail it into this wall? <laughs> well, just put a nail in. Just, just no, no, no. <laughs> this is how you do it. Dodger holds the nail. Mrs. Dodger whacks it with her eyes closed. Right. <laughs> yes, uh, I'll tell you and what, nails will not go in, a nail will not go into these walls. Mm. Yeah, Ivar I says uh, Marcelo's unboxing a Le Mans Daytona. I heard that on some other show, but I have no idea what it is or whatever. I thought it was going to be the Rainbow Daytona. Yeah, who knows? Whatever. Mm. He said, um, all he said to me was, uh, he said, uh, uh, super chat. So he just wants super chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he said, uh, he sent you a special VIP link. And then he, he said, oh, and don't forget to super chat. Dodger, you, ha no, you have uh, this frame on, on the, the wall. How did you fix that? Behind you, there is a frame. I drilled, I drilled a hole in the mortar and then uh, yeah, put a so, plug in. And so that, that is how you hang up your calendar. Out, drill a hole, put the calendar up. Good God, man. You, you, could, uh, you could take away the, the frame and just hang your advent calendar there. Well, she's looking for somewhere to hang it. I don't know. She's looking there. Don't put it under the fireplace. It'll melt. <laughs> you, you're right supposed to eat only half and show us the... Uh, the cutouts. Come on. Did, did, did he just put the whole thing in his mouth? Yes. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Disgusting. Wow. Dodger is greedy. Hello, Mrs. Dodger. How does he behave? Badly, all the time. Yes, I feel yeah. with you. <laughs> I'm getting very jealous of all these Sip Europeans and their chocolate binges here. Or envious yeah today's gonna be a good day very much yes what are you wearing be. jamie what what you got what what were you wearing sea master oh you got your seam you got your seaman master fantastic jamie what's the temperature where you are oh the the temperature is 20. Oh. Yeah, in Poland it's Poland minus twenty. Windows. Do you still have snow, Mrs. Doctor? It's melted now. It's gone. It's gone. Beautiful. Jonathan, do you think I'll be able to sell this in Germany? There's no, there's no proper dealers here in Poland or criminals. Do you think I'll sell this in Germany? Uh, what is that? Never Omega, wear. Manhattan. 
Constellation. <laughs> it's a it's a Constellation double eagle. It's it's the old uh, golf, <laughs> golfer's watch. Hmm. Shitter. It's it's, it's going to be a tough movement. one, Doctor. It's got the same uh, movement as the uh, the man on the moon. Yeah. yeah. What what brand, what brand is that? Omega. Oh, Omega okay. Constellation. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Why are you buying this shit in the first place? Um, didn't buy it. Uh, I did. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> and, and now, Jonathan, you've just put your foot in the shit. Oh, you beautiful watch, Dodger. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the shit now, mate. I'll well, you. Dodger, you're, you're having your foot in the shit because you're not supposed to, to sell your presents. It's got, oh look, it's got a thing, you can look at, it's got glass in the back, you can look at the movement, yeah. look. Yeah. Funnily enough, all the ones he wants to sell are the ones I've bought him. Mm. So that is, uh, oh. that is uh, the uh, Frederic Piquet 1155 that is inside. That's a good movement. No, it's a free to whatever it is, Moonwatchy piece of Amiga shit, or is it, ah, is it based on a Frederic? No, it's not a three to one movement, it's an automatic. Can't you see the rotor spinning? Hang on, I'll tell you which one it is. You're too clever. It's a 3313. Well, that is how Omega calls it, but uh, that is a Frederick Piguet 1155. Is it? Yes. Well, that's no good then, is it? It is, it is good. It is better than the usual Omega stuff. No. It got serviced on the new rotor. Um, really? Why that? Did it scratch? Did it scratch? No, the, the bearing and the rotor went. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, uh, right. Higgins. Yes. I was thinking of you yesterday. Oh shit! What what have Is I that, done? Well, we, we're designing a new kitchen, and the 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 worktop. The colour is called Mont Blanc White. <laughs> okay. So but white is a, is a bitch to, to keep clean. Well, we're clean people. So, okay. mm. yeah, we're not like you. Well, if you're, spinning, if, if you're spilling red German wine on that dirty. countertop. We don't drink wine. Okay. Only champagne. Only top <laughs> <Yeah>. no. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Amazing. Listen, uh, we got 17 viewers now. It's amazing. It's 1.10 yeah. in the morning, and wow. now there's 17 people. But I, I have to get to sleep. I have to get up early. So, uh, so we'll Doctor, do fire up the dungeon, and we continue there. Oh, no, I'm banned there. So. Crappy, send, <laughs> send, the, drop, send the traffic yeah, to the dungeon. Oh, I don't know how to do that. That's too complicated. I'd have to look how to do that first. Dodger will talk you through it. Nah, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Give it a miss. Talk you through what? Yeah. So I, I'm going to uh, got to wrap it up, and we've covered a hell of a lot of stuff on today's show. Just amazing. Yeah, we came back to Advent Calendar now. And the uh, let's review the super chats. Got a dollar ninety nine. Fantastic. Setting a record there. Beautiful. Crappy, you start too early. It's about 7 a.m. where I am. Can't you start an hour later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> NATO says, I thought this was the dungeon. All right. <laughs> no, we don't. No, NATO, no, NATO you can see the, uh, the dungeon uh, from the dungeon. Uh, I'm banned there, so I wouldn't be there. Yeah, no, it's not the dungeon. You should know that good, because there's. There's a good reason to fire up the dungeon. Yeah. Oi, Higgins. Yes. Fire up the uh, um, Swiss and John show. The Swiss and John show, yeah. I have to work as well, so I'm waiting for, since an hour that Crypey is closing that up. Yeah, NATO, to, uh... NATO, yeah, NATO, you should know easily that it's, this is not the dungeon. I'm not showing other people's clips, and there's no screaming and yelling. Yeah. What happened to Swiss? I don't know. I, I saw him appearing on, uh, uh, on JJ's channels. I've... I've tried to reach him. He doesn't reply. I don't know what what's going on with Swiss. I think I think he's avoiding you. 
Yes, I I get the feeling as well. Did you insult he's in the his JJ uh, crew and he's JJ crew now? Yeah. Did you insult his Toblerone collection or something? Not that I remember, but everything is possible, I would say. Yeah, yeah. He just got a new uh, AP, AP Royal Oak. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, seen that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the unboxing is fantastic, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it was the, I think it was 36 millimeters. 37, I think. Yeah, it was. <clears throat> It, it was a smaller size, but it, he's got smaller wrists, so it's perfect. Yeah, I think I think Swiss is avoiding me because he knows that that I will mock on on his lady's uh, size wrists. Well, he's Jamie, you're, you're starting uh, a work day with a cigar. Come on, how decadent is that? I'm in a good mood. Look, the sun <laughs> is shining. Look, at least he's not smoking a sausage. So. <laughs> you never know with it's Jamie. Sausage, well, okay. <laughs> Oh, Jamie, Jamie has gone. Uh, he, yeah. Well, I have to close it out, unfortunately, because it's really late. So okay. that'll wrap Catch, it up. Catching it. Oh, here's bye the bye. last question. Bye bye. Last question. Bye bye. Bye bye. Dodger, what's more important, a Rolex or a central heating? Oh, Dodger has left, left the building. Oh, he well. just left? Okay, yeah. well, um, he would say a Rolex, I'm sure. So, anyway, I think uh, Dodger is pretty content without central heating. Yeah, yeah, he has the uh, firewood, so he's yes. he's fine. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to close it out. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thanks to uh, Higgins and Jonathan, and I mean um, Jamie, Dodger. Okay, Jamie, we're gonna I'm gonna take off the show now. So. Well, Jamie, you have a good day. Make a lot of money and talk to you very soon, yeah? Today is, today is actually going to be a money-making day. Very, very good. Cool. One of my <clears throat> records. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> right. Okay, everyone. I'll see you. Goodbye. Crappy, thank you very much for doing those shows, yeah? Great. Okay. See you. Bye-bye.